here we'll get started it's time microphone not working time. yours not working yeah. <laughs> and we were able to get one over to the legal side now she has one now yeah we snuck one through the okay <laughs> all right so with that we'll call the Full City Council to order for February 20th, 2018. The clerk will call the roll, recording who was in attendance. Anderson Burgos? Here. Bartley? Here. Bresnahan? Here. Green, um, Leahy? Here. LeBron Here. Martinez? Here. Lisi? Here. McGee? Here. McGivern? Here. Roman? Sullivan? Here. Tolman? Here. Bacon? Here. Valentine? Here. God bless America. And the city council.
First up is public comment. No one has signed up. Anyone in the audience looking for public comment? With that, with no one signing up? Also, for the tragedy in Florida, we're going to uh, take a moment of silence for uh, Chief Pond as well as for the issue that occurred in Florida. So, everyone, if we could have a moment of silence. Thank you very much. Um, with regards to our fellow counselor who had a um, grandchild. I'm trying to say it politically correct now. Um, you've tried to brief me several times on the name, so I'm not going to butcher that to your uh, beautiful granddaughter. Uh, could you please tell us the name of this, this child? Her name is Micaela Soral Burgos Molina. Wow. So, congratulations. <laughs> Thank congratulations. you. Thank you. With no public comment, we'll move on to communications. Uh, item one is a communication from the mayor reappointing uh, Mr. Fitzgerald from 40 Gate Street. Make a motion to reappoint. A second. Motion is to reappoint. This is uh, for the term that will expire April 1st, 2021. Motion is to uh, reappoint. It was seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion to suspend the rules and take second. up one through uh, five as they're all reappointments. Second. So two, three, four, and five. Motion to suspend the rules, take up two, three, four, and five because they're all reappointments. Two is for uh, Ms. Fiaro of 25 Morgan Street. Three is for Ms. Hessler of 7 Center Street. Uh, reappointment number number four is for uh, Ms. Miardi of 429 Homestead Ave. And five is for the reappointment of Chief Pond. Um, with regards to two, three, and four, all terms, one uh, for two is for for item number two is April 1st, 2021. For item number three, it's March uh, 2021. Uh, for number four, it's for the uh, Conservation Commission. That's February 1st, 2021. And for Chief Pond, his will expire January 2019. So under suspension rules, take them all together. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is to approve the reappointments. Is there a second? Aye. Second. second. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Item number six is from Irma Cruz. The uh, grandpa's assistant. getting old. Sorry. <laughs> 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 oh. Of course, Councilor McGivern has done that about three times in the last month. So we will. <laughs> <laughs> who's counting? <laughs> what a crazy glue this. <laughs> so item number six is the minutes from the special meeting and regular meeting for fe February 6th. Motion to receive. The motion is to receive. And, and, and seconded. Approve. All approve. those in favor? Oh, Aye. Is Aye. There, okay. Number President, seven. President. Yes. And item number six. Yes. Could we just put one addition that there was no, uh, no vote taken in the executive session and therefore there was nothing to announce when we came out of executive session? Motion is to. Second. Reconsider and make that amendment to the minutes of the meeting. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? And we have what Councilor McGivern asked. All right. Item number seven is from Alicia Zoller uh, with regards to the office. Take seven and eight Gullman. together, Mr. President. Motion is to take up seven and eight as a package. Second. All those Second. in favor? All those opposed? Aye. Aye. Sent to DGR, Mr. President. Second. And sent to DGNR. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? One's this one. Number nine is from Dave Conti from the Water Department. It's an agreement uh, for the sewer and shutoff services. Did motion everyone get a copy of that? Receive and send to finance. Second. Motion Second. is to receive and send to finance. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? President, just under discussion. Yep. Uh, the purpose of finance is for informational purposes. Yes. Um, so because it hasn't actually been implemented yet, so that it can be tracked to see what the impact will be. Thank you. Thank you. Number 10 Spend is- Suspend the rules and take 10 and 11 together as a package, Mr. Second. Second. Motion is take 10 and 11, suspend the rules. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All Aye. opposed? Number 10 is the Board of Health Minutes. 
And number 11 is the Public Works and Sewer Commission Stormwater Authority Minutes. Be received. Motion is Second. to receive. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? <coughs> <coughs> Rules of, of committee, uh, ordinance committee. No presence report? No. Get out of presence report. Already? Ah, there. It's at the very, very bottom. Right See, there, that's what happens when you have to wear glasses. I don't want to miss it. Days. It's very exciting. No report. No, just kidding. Um, one, one report is with regards to Councilor Vacan and Marcos Morero. They have met with regards to holding joint meetings again for ordinance and the planning board. So I want to thank them for uh, sitting down, I think it was on Valentine's Day, Yes. Um, in order to <laughs> get those meetings back up, working together. Um, I did attend the uh, Chamber of Commerce Legislative Breakfast, and one message was clear. What? Better you than me. I had coffee. It was very nice. Nice. But um, one thing that the businesses are, are asking that we do hold those joint committees again to help businesses and, and streamline the process, make it a little easier. So I want to thank Councilor Vacan as well as Marcos and, and all the people that were involved. Uh, Councilor Vacan, if you want to add anything to that? or um, I guess the only thing that I would add is they will be having their formal meeting next week and then I'll be hearing back from Marcos as to how we'll be moving forward. And in the meantime, Ryan has been good enough to look at the room for logistics in terms of fitting in a couple of tables so that we'll all be at the same level, but everybody expressed an interest in being able to be facing the public. And so we're working out those logistics um, for the hearings. So I'm optimistic and we even set up an initial agenda for the first four hearings. So and the anticipated I'm, date was end of March? Yes, and I, I think I received an email that indicated end of March or beginning of April, but hopefully the end of March um, <coughs> so that there's a couple things that just need a little attention to move forward. Okay, and mm -hmm. lastly is uh, I want to thank uh, our, uh, our Ryan okay, up here, Ryan you. Allen. He did go out and get a, um, to make it easier for counselors, uh, especially the chairs, in order to record meetings, we do have a full-time um, calendar book in his desk, so that way you can see what's going on throughout the months and jump ahead to schedule meetings, as well as you'll have a whiteboard for a calendar for the current month to see what meetings are going on. So if you're coming into the back room and you're curious, they'll be right up there. You're still gonna get your emails, they're still gonna be on the web, but for us personally, in order to better see it and track it, one of the suggestions by a few counselors was if we could have that type of stuff. So he has gone out and uh, made that happen. So thank you very much. With that, we'll now move on to committees. Ordinance committee, item 12A. I, yep. Just, can we suspend the rules and I like, take, go ahead. Thank you. I'd like to suspend the rules and see if, see if we could take up on the item from the school committee so that we can get them out of here sooner because they have. Okay. Yeah, is that it's possible? Late, it's a late file. It's a late. Is this? Not consider a late file because no, no, it was no, already no, went no, through no, joint no. committee already. It's not a late file. It's just to get them to if there's any questions that they can answer it. But um. Okay, so motion is suspend the rules to take up items that were supposed to be on the joint committee uh, for school and city council but somehow they missed the agenda. They were taken up in the meeting, they were addressed, details were given. So it's not a late file. So the motion is to suspend the rules to take it from committee because it missed the report somehow. Second. Motion is seconded, okay. all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So with that, it's agenda item number 23. Uh, the order is that the, uh, the city approved the following contract for shared services for the food services director with the city of Springfield to be paid for the school department out of its budget. Okay. Shared director costs will be 30,000, which will be paid to the city of Springfield who houses the food services director for both districts. So with that, under suspension of rules and on this order, I'll turn it over to the chair. What number is it, Todd? This is agenda item 23. It's not. No, 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 no. Right. Mm. Okay, so it's. Okay. I was getting corrected by the wife, huh? <laughs> <laughs> So okay. So yes, let me and uh, for clarifications, we did have a meeting on February eighth with the joint committee, and that item was nine, um, item number five on the agenda. Just for clarification, 
um, so it did go in front of the committee there was a discussion and actually um, Mr. Anthony Soto came in and clarified the role of this individual who's um, contracted through the city of Springfield to um, uh, work and, and, and make sure that we're really um, making progress with the uh, school the school lunches um, or school services, I'm sorry. And um, he shared how this gentleman has worked, you know, in other uh, districts and done a great job, especially in Springfield, in helping them um, be uh, effective in their uh, accounting of, of their school program. This is a side uh, contract out of uh, Sodesco, so it's not part of Sodesco, it's something different. And um, they're actually here tonight, and this is why I wanted to take it out of order, so that if there's any questions, um, the committee did vote to send it to the full council, and this is why I would like to see if we can um, allow them to speak on it if there's any questions from anyone here. Motion is to suspend the rules to allow the school department to speak on it if you, anyone has questions. Anthony Soto is here. Second. He's in the back. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. All Aye. those opposed? Anthony, if you want to come up. <laughs> Make sure the mic's on. Please. Can you hear? Yep. Perfect. Yeah. So as Gladys mentioned, thank you. Um, what, what this is is an intergovernmental agreement that has to be approved by the city council if, if it's your will. Um, so it, we're sharing the food service director right now. The food service director in Springfield oversees their operation, and he is an independent check to make sure that Sodexo is honoring their contract. In addition to that, he handles all of the financial reporting. He, handle, he handles all the audits that come down from the state, and he's responsible for all, you know, just making sure they're honoring every piece of the contract. Um, the gentleman's name is Tim Gray. He's got 12 to 15 years of experience in a district four times our size. I mean, uh, for, for $30,000, I think we're getting a, a bargain. We're getting one of the best individuals in the state. And it's <coughs> also not coming out of any general fund dollars. It's coming right out of the food service revolving account. So um, I, I ask that you approve this because it's one of the major steps that we need to take to improve the quality of our food service program. <laughs> I'll make a motion approve. Second. Second. Councilor Tallman. Yeah, I just had a question, Anthony. How, how long is this for? Is, it, is there a contract with them so many years? It lines up right to the five-year contract that the council has already approved. So it would be um, effective immediately through the end of, of five years. So five years. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Vacan. Thank you. Um, can you just let us know how much extra money you have in the revolving account since this will be coming out of it? Yeah, so the, the revolving account itself had carried a balance of about $700,000 that the only way, way you can use that money is to basically reinvest it back into the food service program. So one of the things that we're doing this year is every single school, uh, with the exception of Lawrence, is going to be getting brand new cafeteria tables. Um, and Lawrence, just because the ones that we're purchasing don't fit. Um, and doesn't work well for the school. But we could invest that in capital improvements, um, replacing a lot of the equipment in our kitchens. Uh, we're doing cafeteria tables, like I said. It could go towards administrative costs, um, which this would fall under administrative costs. In addition to that, every year, the food service account, it, ge it generates at a minimum $550,000 uh, profit. Um, so it would be pretty much eating away at some of that profit. So the, the minimum is 550, but they, Sodexo aims to you know, bring in more revenue than just the 550. But that's the baseline. If we fall short in any given year, Sodexo actually has to cut us a check for the difference. Okay, thank you. Councilor Lisi. Thank you. Um, thanks for coming down, Anthony. I just want to make sure I understand what you're saying. So the, um, the contract for the food service director would align with the five-year contract that we already have with Sodesco. Is that what you're talking about? That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Councilor McGivern. Thank you, Anthony. The Sodesco contract is the one that we voted on last year, which I understand. 
this contract, the reason you're asking for a vote is because we're sharing the services with Springfield. And have we received a copy of this contract? I haven't seen it. It's taken up in committee. committee. I still haven't seen a copy of the contract. Okay. Do we receive it? It was received December 19th and sent to joint committee. Because yeah, we are all supposed to receive copies of these contracts. What, what is Springfield's share of the of, of the contract? What, how much are they paying? So it's actually an employee of Springfield Public Schools. So I'm sure because he would be assuming additional responsibilities and taking us under the their umbrella that he probably received a bump in pay. Um, I don't know that to be the case for sure, but I'm, I'm pretty sure, you know, he, he's taking on additional duties. So, but we're, we are paying $30,000, which represents uh, two, I think it's 15 hours a week. So we would get two full days. It doesn't turn out to be, you know, a, a given day. He's, he would be working for us, um, but it would, it would total about 15 hours a, a week. And who's going to oversee his, uh, his hours that he works for the city of Oak. I will. Thank you. Any further questions? On the motion. All right, so the motion is to, and, and just once again, the reason this is before us is it's a five-year contract. Anything over three years requires our approval. So with that, the motion <coughs> is to uh, approve the food services director and shared costs with Springfield. So the motion is to approve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Mr. President, I think it's a roll call. I'm, that's what I was going to ask Anthony. Do you need a roll call for the contract call. services? <laughs> How about we do a roll call anyways, just in case? Motion is to do a roll call. Do I have three members? Roll call. Roll call. Roll call. Roll call. I have more than three. So, clerk will call the roll. If you're voting yes, you're voting in favor of this contract. If you vote no, you're voting against it. Anderson Burgos? Yes. Bartley? Yes. Bresnahan? Yes. Leahy? No. LeBron Martinez? Yes. Lisi? Yes. McGee? Yes. McGivern? Yes. Roman? Sullivan? Yes. Tolman? Yes. Bacon? Yes. Valentine? Yes. With your vote, you approve the contract. Also, Council Roman will abstain from this. That's why he left the room in order to make sure he followed the procedure. So, Council Roman, you. you come back in. There's one more, though, right? There's one more from the schools. I'm that was the only one received. That's the only one, right, Anthony? Yep, that was the other ones are just complied with. The, the one on okay. Those yeah, are just complied with. Some, or? yeah, the other ones were complied with and tabled. So, all right. So, is anyone here for the ones that are being complied with? I don't think so. Well, it was um, no. The chief is not here, and um, but he had. I, I'm a little bit uncertain because what happened is that we went through it. This was already complied with because they sent the information to it, and I guess it came back to the committee, and they felt that it was complied with. So, okay. so with those, there's an order requesting information. <coughs> you received it in committee, and therefore. It, the order's been complied with. So since that doesn't require anyone to speak, what we okay. can do is take those up when we get to the joint committee, and we'll pull that at that time. Okay. Okay? Yep. All right, so with that, we'll go back to 12A <clears throat> from ordinance. The committee on ordinance was who referred in order that the city of Hoyoke adopt Mass General Law Chapter 39, Section 23D in order to allow committee members to miss one meeting during the public hearing process. Thank Council you, Chair. Mr. President. A motion to receive and pass the first reading. Okay. Second. Motion is to receive and pass the first reading under discussion. So this is a pretty straightforward state law that would allow our boards who currently require that every member attend every meeting in order to be able to vote on a matter to miss one meeting as long as they stipulate in writing that they have reviewed all materials, minutes, and written submitted materials prior to their vote. And there is also accompanying documentation that they would sign to certify that they have done so. And this allows us to move forward with the actions on boards where on occasion the action would be delayed if a person 
unexpectedly was unable to attend. So I think it would allow us to move things forward and the committee unanimously approves adopting this state law. Yes, it was signed off by uh, all members of the committee, uh, Vakin, Bartley, Lisi, Anderson, Burgos, and Roman. Anyone else in their discussion? No further discussion. The motion was passed the first reading. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion to pass the second reading. Second. Motion is passed the second reading. It was seconded. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion that the passage be ordained. Motion that the passage be ordained. Um, with that, the clerk will call the roll. If you're voting, you're voting in favor of it. If not, you're voting against. Anderson Burgos? Yes. Bartley? Yes. Bresnahan? Yes. Lee? <clears throat> yes. LeBron Martinez? Lisi? Yes. McGee? Yes. McGivern? Yes. Roman? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Tolman? Yes. Bacon? Yes. Valentine? Yes. <clears throat> 12 yeas. With your vote, you've approved the, the new ordinance. Mr. President, we could take up 12B and 12C okay. as a package. Motion is to spend a rule to take up 12B and C as a package. The seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? 12B, the committee on ordinance who was referred in order that the city council adopt a rent control ordinance for the art and industrial overlay zone and other zones appropriate in order to protect current residents from being displaced as new residential or commercial tents beginning to seek out space in the city's uh, center. Recommend that it has been complied with. 12C is that the committee of ordinance was referred uh, in order that the city of Boyoke through ordinance pass a fair uh, chance rule requiring that the city itself as an employer make reservations for civil service process and eliminate any barriers including the check the box. And that was also an order that it was complied with. So the motion is to receive and adopt the committee report? Motion, motion is to receive and adopt the committee report under discussion. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, on the matter of rent control, this is a matter that is under control at the state level, and so we do not have jurisdiction over it. And so we did have a general discussion about the desire behind it, um, but the committee did find it to be complied with. Relative to the fair chance rule, it has been confirmed um, in our discussions last year that the city does not have a checkoff box relative to this matter of employment. And so as an employer, the city is not pursuing it, but the maker of the order. So this, there were two orders on the similar things. So the maker is comfortable with this one being considered complied with, and we are pursuing more formal action um, to codify in our ordinances relative to how we are seeking employees in the city. So we continue on that. Thank you. Anyone else under discussion? With that, the motion was second to uh, that the orders are complied with. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? <coughs> Finance. Uh, 13A. Bless you. Any Make a motion to receive item 13A for purpose of adopting. Second. Motion is to receive, adopt, pass the first reading. It was seconded under discussion. Mr. Uh, President, just a quick report. The Committee on Finance met. Uh, this item was taken up. Uh, the police chief and Sergeant Hart were here to answer our questions and any anticipated questions we could come up with for the council. This is a three-year grant of $127,000. Uh, we currently are at a level of $62,000, expecting and hopefully to get the full amount before the fiscal year is out. These is used for hiring. There are more than one practices when we hire um, bodies and officers when we're using grants. We always want to be careful of potential unemployment costs if and when the grant dries up. And we always want to make sure that we're looking into the, uh, into the future. Um, as I said, this is a three-year grant. The uh, chief and the uh, and Sergeant Hart assured us that they're looking at some retirements in the year, in the fourth year that will offset any problems they will be able to if, if the grant is not uh, uh, not re-upped um, after the third year. Uh, we will be responsible for at the moment uh, three new police officers and assigning one sergeant, so the hiring of one sergeant to cover what would intended to be at this time. A creating and bringing back the community, the community police unit itself and using it throughout the neighborhoods within the city as needed and where needed. 
uh, the committee recommends that the uh, grant be accepted and be set up to be used uh, both by the police and, and an account set up to be uh, monitored by the uh, mayor and the, uh, the this treasurer and auditor. And there is a city match to this one, Councillor? There is. I'm sorry. The match is the $62,000. Uh, that match is not additional monies into the budget, but monies that are already there. All right, so I did forget to read it, and I apologize. Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A, the City Council hereby accept the provisions of the COPS hiring grant, uh, authorize the establishment of fund or method appropriate for accounting receipts and expenditures of all resources, of which one twenty seven six fourteen over a three-year period as the city match. <coughs> Four or three officers, as the chair has pointed out. Under discussion? No one? Motion was to pass the first reading. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion is passed the second reading. The clerk will call the roll. If you're voting, you're voting for the acceptance <coughs> of the grant. If you vote against it, you're voting against the grant. Anderson Burgos? Yes. Bartley? Yes. Bresnahan? Yes. Leahy? LeBron Martinez? Yes. Lisi? McGee? Yes. <laughs> yes. McGivern? Yes. Roman? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Tolman? Yes. Bacon? Yes. Valentin? Yes. Put your vote. Days. Put your vote. You're approved. The Eleven, 11 of the right? Eleven to one. Because you have one abstain. Abstain. Leahy. Councilors, ladies, abstaining from the vote. Well, there's twelve. Twelve. There's thirteen councilors, so there'd be twelve ah, yeas. Got it. Thanks. <laughs> All right, item 13B, any packaging here, or we're going to take them separately? Uh, no, I, I prefer to uh, take 13B okay. by itself, and perhaps package the next two. 13B, you mean? 13B, yep. 13B, the Committee on Finance, when was referred in order that there hereby be, <coughs> is hereby appropriated by transfer of fiscal year 2018, $2,400 from office supplies to temp seasonal. Is there a motion? Motion to receive and to uh, pass the first reading. Second. Motion is to receive, pass the first reading. It was seconded under discussion. Thank you, Mr. President. The committee didn't meet on the uh, on the item proposed. Uh, this is, just correct me if I'm wrong, the, uh, the auditor's department. Is it? This is. We're still not getting them on the, uh, on the orders. Temporary help auditor's department, yes. Thank you. Um, the, the proposal here is is to move move money within the middle of the year from supplies to temp seasonal to help fill a position that was and has been vacated I think for some time due to a medical absence of one of the uh, one of the employees of the auditor's department and also to bring back uh, Bellamy Smith for the purpose of helping out with getting the uh, the current um, books up to date in terms of uh, being able to close out the year which as you know would allow us to uh, take some of our final votes and, and then to make sure that the current fiscal year is up to date. Uh, this, this is I think relatively cheap considering what has already been accomplished in, the, in a short period of time. Uh, Bellamy actually volunteered some services unbeknownst to I think a lot of us and um, he, he's been helping out in the auditor's office and they are currently all through November of 2017 and should be done with December uh, very shortly within this month itself. Uh, the, the importance of that is, the, and, and the person who was on leave, I believe, has come back from leave or is about to come back from leave, but the importance of that is the, um, you know, our closure to the books itself. And he says things are going very well in that area. It was a, a number of different things that put them in that position, which is a lot is related to what I, I believe we'll be having a discussion later on in terms of what's happening with prior fiscal years. Uh, Bellamy did tell me that in absence, of, I guess now Bellamy will be the acting auditor until we reappoint a new auditor, but in absence of being able to talk to Josh, Bellamy did tell me that the independent re audit is moving along very quickly. Uh, preliminary results are, is, it looks like they're, they're on top of what has happened and on top of what adjustments need to be done. Uh, there's no numbers at this time, but the uh, preliminary results are in favor of, uh, of the city and in favor of what we, of, I think, putting some of our worst worries uh, uh, to bed. Uh, they should be done sometime the end of next week with a report coming out 
and then we can uh, we can adjust and take the necessary votes, including which will lead to the tax rate itself. So what we're recommending is this twenty four hundred dollars is would be well spent. Um, it, there's there's going to be an, an off, you know, between Josh now retired, Josh now resigning, and Bellamy taking over. Bellamy's salary will come out of the auditor's line item, you know, from this point on until we reappoint, which I hope we do very quickly, our next auditor. Councilor Leahy? Yeah, thank you. I'll be voting against this or if somebody wants to send it back to committee. Um, as as Councilor McGurvin said, uh, Josh is no longer with us. And if anyone has read uh, his uh, his uh, very uh, interesting um, a letter uh, uh, letting us know that he was no longer going to be working with the city of a few of the things he mentioned was um, that uh, the accounts were reconciled for multiple years. Um, another thing he mentioned too was uh, the postings were months behind and did not reconcile at all. And that was prior to his service. And this is the gentleman that uh, Councilor McGivern was stating that this money's going to. If this person from just this letters, and we haven't seen everything yet, but if this person hadn't done the work, uh, um, I, I think this is <coughs> a very interesting uh, conversation for committee, um, and I certainly don't feel comfortable by um, putting any money towards this. Thank you. Councilor McGivern. Uh, Councilor, he makes a good point. However, I think the putting a person in the position, putting people in the position to of an office that is understaffed when it's when even when they have completely full staff is something that this this is it is intended to do. Um, as I said, they they, you know, they made um, up a lot of ground in the last couple of months. Um, doing, I think, a lot of what happened was is the independent. Um, team came in and took over what they were doing was the researching of those prior fiscal years, which Josh had very little to do with. Um, the, the other point that Councilor Leahy makes, and I think we have to come to the bottom of it, and I, I, was, I was hoping to address this down the road, but I, I really think there's there's some a need for the city, including us, to get back to the fundamentals of municipal finance and to understand some things that are necessary that every department head, not just the auditor, not just the treasurer, not just the people in finance, but every department head has to understand when it comes to spending. Number one, an appropriation starts in room one with the chief financial officer. It's responsible for the entire budget, for every dollar spent in the city, is the mayor of the city of Hoyoke, and nothing can change that. Number two, the city council must at some point in time approve an appropriation that the mayor and only mayor can, can propose. And therefore, we become somewhat responsible in the team, and certainly we are the fiscal watchdogs of the city itself. But we fundamentals don't pass this on to the city department heads. We've seen things this year that have never happened, and I think Josh's letter cites some of it, where department heads are spending money that there is no line item. There was no appropriation. Use the debit card. That, that's, that's unheard of in, 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 in municipal finance. It's un wrong in municipal finance. We, we need to get people, and, and, and a lot of people, I don't think it's because they're doing it with ill intentions. I think we have a lot of new people in positions that they're not accustomed to, and they don't have the people to go to. They don't have the experienced auditor. They don't have the experienced person in the finance, you know, right positions to answer their questions or to show them how to do a warrant to show them how to take a, a invoice, to show them how it must get to the mayor's office, signed off by the mayor before they can improve it. Some cases it has to come to us for a second approval if it's a transfer of monies. These are things that I think department heads need to know and are fundamental things so that we don't get trapped in where we're trying to make up for things that happened in prior years and therefore the current year got let go because there's only so many people in this office. We need, we need to give them a chance to, to let the dust settle. We need to give them a chance to show us the answers and not jump to conclusions. But at the same time, I think we have to send a strong message that it's time to get back to the fundamentals. And if you follow the fundamentals of municipal finance, not much can go wrong other than the fact that we're often broke and you can't spend money you don't have. 
postings in Josh's letter are not just postings in his department or, or out of his department before he got there. Postings can be anywhere from the treasurer to the tax collector, a number of things that do or don't happen correctly. Incorrect postings, you know, can, can take forever to determine that something that should have gone in, in item number A, line item number, you know, CC, should have been in item number B, line item number, line item number DD. These are things that an auditor has to pick up on a daily basis that office is responsible for to make sure department heads are doing the right thing. If you don't catch it down the road, you, you, you don't know what the problem is. And when you don't know what the problem is, you think the worst. The worst might not be as bad as we thought it was, but we need to get the answer from that independent team and we need to see and I think have a sit down with you know, Mr. President with a lot of our financial people and say get back to the fundamentals. Councilor Vacant. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I am very supportive of Councilor Leahy's position on this matter. I will not be supporting this transfer. The problem that is being addressed right now in our city, these are the facts we do know. <laughs> the problem that is being audited now is twice as large as it was the year that it was discovered, which was the year before. That was under the coverage of the auditor's department, who's supposed to be our gatekeeper for all of these transfers for the city, um, to which the same person is now reappointed who was over the department when the problem doubled. I am extremely uncomfortable with this temporary appointment, and I will not support money being transferred to fund it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I agree as well. You know, uh, unfortunately, because of uh, Section 61A, uh, we don't have the authority to appoint a temporary um, auditor. Um, some of the things that are very troubling is if you look through Josh's letter, and uh, he says, he's, at least to me, when I uh, uh, went back and forth with him through uh, Facebook Messenger, uh, he's more than willing to talk to me about this and to talk about how that uh, he never received warrants for the Christmas tree, or he never received uh, the proper uh, warrants um, for other things as well. Um, if, uh, getting back to you know good governance and good financial uh, uh, literacy here um, is a little bit more difficult than I think people are thinking it is. And I think it's going to get much worse before it gets better. And I think that we have we have to clean house here. You know, I, I'm not happy about having a person that was already there uh, come back in as a temporary person because a lot of these issues arose when that person's there. I'm not taking anything away from this person's uh, character, but we need somebody that's gonna be the full time, that this is going to be their job, and we should hire somebody sooner than later. Councilor McGurin. Just the, uh, the $2,400 is, with without the $2,400, has nothing to do with the mayor's temporary appointment of an auditor. As I think everyone knows, a temporary appointment when there's a vacancy is the mayor's sole choice. That, that will come out of the line item of the auditor's salary. This is for additional help. When most of it was for a period of time when one of the employees, not the auditor, was out on medical uh, on a medical absence. And this is for additional help where I think they're still correcting some of the books, but as I stated, have made great grounds towards it. Um, you know, whether we're happy with a temporary appointment or not, it took us two years to replace the auditor the last time. Shame on us. That temporary appointment came out of retirement of Bellamy Smith and did a job that was our responsibility to appoint an auditor. And we took us nearly two years to do that. You know, I encourage at this time, we can appoint an auditor within the next two to three months period and go on a high search of someone that is qualified and be prepared to pay them for what is needed to pay a, a person of this position. Question to the chair. This is uh, 2,400 from office supplies to temp seasonal, which the understanding was to pay Bellamy or just hire temp seasonal. That's what I'm looking for clarification for. At the time, this is before Josh's the auditor's resignation letter came in. So at the time it was kind of, it wasn't you know, to pay Bellamy as the acting auditor, it was to pay temp seasonal help, which is a line item that, that would be used to pay any temporary person that's brought into the office, obviously on a part-time basis with this amount of money. So I guess following that line is, we were looking to use the money to hire Bellamy as temp seasonal because someone was out on 
injured, whatever health issue. Well, it, it's not it's not our decision who who the auditor hires. No, no I understand. But Bellamy that. was volunteering in the office, and so we were going to use the money to pay him. That's why I'm just trying to get down to the line to to get to the ultimate question: is if we're going to use twenty four hundred dollars to pay him because he was helping out as a temp seasonal, if he's now in a position and he's taking from that fund as the auditor, do we still need the twenty four hundred as temp seasonal because he's now using money from a different account? Which then makes this order moot. That, that's a fair question. There's been hours. I don't think we have to send it back to committee, but there's been hours of uh, work that has been done. And, and so, I, are there bills that are? Is there money owed to him for the work? He's I, done? I I don't know, and I'll be happy to make a motion to table and get answers to any questions. Okay. And I missed the meeting. That was that was my fault, and that. I wasn't well, gonna bring that I'll up. say I wouldn't have asked that question because we learned all the new stuff after, after. that meeting. Um, motion to table. Motion. No. Okay. The first motion was sent back to committee. Sim second. Yeah. Right, right, oh, I second. Slow, it. slow down. Slow down. Motion came from over here from Councilor Valentin was was to send it back to committee. It was seconded. Is there another motion? <coughs> motion to table. Motion is table. Is there a second to that motion? Second. second. Well, that is seconded. So first we'll deal with the motion to table. Motion to table is seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Oh. no. Oh. Chairs in doubt. Uh, raise your hands. The motion is to table. Raise your hands if you look to table the item. Three. The motion fails. Motion was to send back to committee. It was seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? On the motion, oh. Mr. Mr. Yeah. President? Yes. Well, the committee will be happy to take it up again, but this time, would the people have questions, please come to the committee and ask the questions to us. So the motion is to refer back to committee. It was seconded. All those in favor? Aye. All those Aye. opposed? <clears throat> All. Back to committee. Thirteen C. Well, committee makes motion to suspend the rules to take up C, 13C and 13D as a package. Motion to suspend the rules, take up 13C and D as a package. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, C is the Committee on Finance was referred in order that there hereby be appropriated $2,026.85 from firefighters to injured on duty. Um, 13D is the same, but it's for patrolmen, so we're taking... $844.88 from patrolmen to then give to injured on duty. Uh, motion is to receive. Pass the first reading. Pass the first reading. Uh, Second. Discussion. Just uh, real quick, Mr. President, the committee didn't meet. We had the, uh, from the police department, the chief again and Sergeant Hart on this item. We had a long discussion of the uh, number of injuries. I, I think we've, we've been looking at this in terms of it seems like a lot, and they actually brought documentation that the injuries are down from prior years. Uh, this line item is money being taken from the salaries of what a person would get if they were working into an injury on duty for the same salary that they get, but because they were injured on duty, they're not working. Mass General Law requires us to use a different line item when we pay them in this manner. Um, the chief did tell us that, you know, yes, there is sometimes uh, an impact on, uh, on overtime, but he, he does his best not to, not to uh, have impacts on overtime. It's more so if, um, if you know, if a person is, an officer is injured on duty who's, who's covering a beat or, you know, or is out in the cruiser on a given night, he does have to replace them, but there are certain positions he can go without for, uh, for a short period of time. Uh, Chief Pond, as we had a moment of silence earlier, was unable to attend the meeting. Uh, he did send a brief email. I'm not sure if everybody got copies of it, but it, it essentially said the same thing, that it's injured on duty. Uh, the last time we talked to the chief, um, he said that the uh, it, it's about the same amount of injured on duty. This is not the issue that he's having. Some of the issues he's having is firefighters that are injured on duty are looking to go out on a disability. And uh, there, there's a, a struggle between the retirement board and a struggle between the uh, can this firefighter return to duty in, in their capacity. Medical advice medical um, advice is always sought both by the city and both by the, uh, I'm sure, by the individual. But in each case, we are required to pay these, these salaries and we are required to put this money into the injured on duty line item. 
Nurse Hyde, Councilor Bacon? Um, how many people are in the situation of the injured with the question of disability? Would that be one? In, in pertaining to both of these orders? No, it fire. One. Thank you. Thank you. Just for, for those at home or anyone in the audience, um, due to our new rules or new ordinance on you can't change from certain line items, it has to come to us for approval. This falls in it. It used to be that this type of transfer just went through through the department heads and, and, and everything else. So by doing this, we were able to see uh, and try and see what's going on for injured on duty. As Councilor McGivern or the chair has said correctly, it's just taking from what we've already approved and putting it into injury on duty. This is what's required. But it allows us to see how that is going as well as at how it impacts uh, over time. So just for those who are uh, looking in and see what we're talking about. With that, the motion was passed. The first reading it was seconded. All those in favor? Aye. All Aye. opposed? Motion to pass the second reading. Motion is passed. Second reading. It was seconded. All those in uh, With that, the clerk will call the roll. If you're voting, you're voting for the transfers. If not, you're voting against. Anderson Burgos? Yes. Bartley? Yes. Bresnahan? Yes. Leahy? Yes. LeBron Martinez? Yes. Lisi? Yes. McGee? Yes. McGivern? Yes. Roman? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Tolman? Yes. Bacon? Yes. Valentin? Yes. Unanimous vote. With your vote, you approve the transfers. Item 13E from the Committee on Finance, who was referred in order that the City Council approve payment of prior year bills from Grin and Bear for government portraits. The payment will come to the City Hall supply budget line. Recommended that the order be adopted. Under discussion. Receive and adopt. Second. Motion is to receive adopt under discussion. Under discussion, Mr. President, we did uh, meet with this. There was no one. Uh, no one came in to, uh, to talk to us. I think most of us know the story of the Grin and Barrett. It's a bill that needs to be paid for a prior year, and we, need, and we, and we got an answer from uh, Rory Casey, the mayor's office, about paying not only this bill, but paying the, uh, the next bill that, you know, so that we can uh, continue with this tradition of uh, the whole government of a uh, city being um, documented in a, a city portrait. Um, unfortunately, with, with this, we do understand it's a prior year bill now, and we do understand that we have to adopt this vote, but we yet to receive an appropriation. Right. We are open, and, and I'm not sure if they've contacted our administrative assistant because no one contacted myself that this, you know, appropriation would be uh, before us this evening. As far as I can tell, it's not, and this vote is mute unless we have the dollar figure or where that money is coming from. Um, without any any other knowledge I'm not aware of, I would just make a motion to table and second. Second. To refer a copy to the mayor's office to get us the appropriation. Motion is to table with a copy to the mayor's office to get a uh, transfer in with regards to the outstanding. It would be prior bill. What about the photo for last session? Wouldn't that be encompassed in there as well? Yeah. And don't we have one that fell off the wall that's supposed to be repaired? So all three of those should be in that transfer. Councilor Lisi? I was just going to say, can we please make a note of that when, when we make the request that we need all three items uh, accounted the, for? Within the transfer. So the motion is to table a request to the mayor with regards to transfer of those three items. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Item 13F. <coughs> motion to receive it pass first reading. Motion to receive it pass first reading. Uh, committee on Finance was referred in order that there hereby be appropriated $2,691.10 from captains, pay clerk, or part time clerk, part time clerk, uh, to lieutenants, senior clerk, and administrative assistant, adding up to $2,691.10. Motion is to pass first reading under discussion. Councilor McGivern. Thank you, Mr. President. The uh, committee does uh, did meet with the chief of police on this item also, and and the uh, his financial assistant, uh, Sergeant Hart. Uh, our recommendation was a four to zero vote to recommend the approval of this transfer. It's the I, I'm not going to do a great job of summing this one up. I apologize to everyone, but this is the uh, the moving of monies 
with the moving of you know some of the positions that take place during the course of the year um, and the need for the uh, the positions that have have been refilled I guess is the best way or backfilled all positions not new positions but backfilled which is now the lieutenants the uh, senior clerks and I think the administrative site assistant is, is a mute mute point but uh, the chief did come in and made a fine argument. I hope one of the committee members can make a better argument than I just did. Anyone else? He's fine. Right. <laughs> Motion is to pass the first reading. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. Motion to pass the second reading? Second. Second. It was seconded. Uh, clerk will call the roll. Uh, you're voting for the transfer. You're voting no is against the transfer. Anderson Burgos? Yes. Bartley? Yes. Bresnan? Yes. <laughs> Leahy? Yes. LeBron Martinez? Yes. Lisi? Yes. McGee? Yes. McGivern? Yes. Roman? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Tallman? Yes. Bacon? Yes. Valentin? Yes. Unanimous vote. What's your vote? You've approved the transfer. 13G? Make a motion to, uh, to receive and to adopt the committee report. Motion is receive and adopt the committee report, which is uh, to deny. Uh, this is... Uh, 13G is the committee on finance was referred in order whereas property values in the city have risen at a uh, very modest rate and that the tax and maximum amount allowed any increase in property value should reflect a decrease in the tax rate whereas level of funding will not work in addressing the city's implementing fin uh, financial woes whereas uh, strong measures must be implemented now in order to avoid financial crisis and lessen the burden on the taxpayer recommended that uh, and actually there was a request for uh, to cut spending by 2.5 percent it's missing from here but that was the original order the motion is to um, deny the order um, with that under discussion thank you mr. president just uh, uh, first councilman McGarry and then we're gonna just count. a committee report if I could uh, the committee didn't meet on this we actually spent a lot of time a lot of time on this line item uh, we commend uh, councilor Sullivan for his intentions um, when, when I first read the order, I wasn't really sure of what the the method was for his intentions. I understood his intentions from the get-go, and, and the more I listened to him, the more I understood what he what he was trying to say. And I think it's a message that's echoed throughout these chambers for a long time that we need to tighten the uh, the fiscal belt itself. We need to tighten the budget process, but we need to uh, recognize that our revenues are not. The, uh, the revenues that we had 10 years ago are not the revenues that we had five years ago, mostly due to the, the loss of the Mount Town coal plant. And it's going to be some time before we stabilize and, and be able to make up those revenues through new growth. Um, but, you know, with, even with Mike's intention of trying to send this, a very strong message to the mayor as he's putting together this fiscal year budget, uh, which will be with us, I believe, sometime in, uh, sometime in the end of April, early May, um, we, we feel that, or at least I want to speak partly for myself, and I think what we, what we tried to, send, to say is that to, to tie in a number to a mayor who's facing the, the challenges of keeping city services at at least level, level service itself, which of course is not level funding, is very difficult. And the property values, you know, fluctuate with, uh, with every time the, the assessors do their reviews, they're required for a full review every three years, but they divide the city into a third each year to, to uh, keep up with it, is something that is, is very difficult because the, our, our assessed values are often based on sales from a year, sometimes a year and a half, two years prior, whereas they never match the appraised values, which sometimes is good and sometimes is bad. But we, we felt that we, or I think I'm not going to speak for everyone on this part, but I felt very strongly that fighting for city services is what I'd rather do than trying to cut city services. Um, we have a budget that is, for the most part, personnel and some office supplies and expense supplies itself. For Someone had a better number than I did, but I think we're going on... 10 years with Mike Sullivan and six years with Alex Morse of not one capital dollar for capital outlay has been in a budget when we adopted a budget at the beginning of the year. That's police cars, 
fire trucks. That's a, a number of different things in terms of buildings and things that, you know, we need large expenses that we need to do and plan for. We do plan for them, but we use free cash to pay for them or bonding. Um, we, we do and we have cut the expense parts of the, each department head's budget as close as we can, you know, to, to the... Uh, to the, to the belt, and, and we've done a lot of things as a, as a city council in cutting the budget. What we haven't done, and I'm not proposing that we do yet, is reduce government. And reduce government isn't cutting the budget. Reducing government will have an impact on the budget, but reducing budget, reducing government is when you change an ordinance for the number of city employees in each department and work with less. That's how you reduce a budget, and that's how you reduce government. I don't want to do that at this point in time because I think over the last decade and a half, we've been forced to do that, a lot through attrition, a lot through uh, not filling in, a lot through you know struggling with, with a very tight budget. And just during the course of the year, you can see department heads don't immediately refill their, their vacant positions. So we, we, we're recommending at this time that the order be denied. Um, and we do tip our half to Councillor Sullivan because his argument, and I'm sure he will do a very good job of making it this evening, is one that should be heard and we should all be thinking of these things. Okay, thank you. Um, first of all, on, on the order, um, the, the final line is still, it's, it's not in uh, the agenda here tonight correctly and, and the way you read it. Um, it is to encourage the mayor to cut the budget. It's, it's not an order that he has to cut the budget. It's just to encourage him and to send a strong message, as we said. But that is, that, that is the key word, to encourage him to begin the cutting of the budget. Um, I, I don't agree uh, completely on the need to cut services in such a small reduction. We have a lot of other areas, um, some controversial, some not controversial, but they, they don't involve cutting personnel and fire and um, uh, police and uh, DPW. There's a lot of other areas. We saw uh, one example, and I guarantee over the course of the last six months, we've seen this time and time and time again, right with the auditor's department, $2,400 in supplies, supplies that wasn't needed. It's just a matter of working closer with the department's head. Here goes $2,400 in supplies. Where's it going? not the supplies, money wasn't needed for supplies. Uh, stuff is still being padded into the budgets and used for other purposes. There's other things that can be negotiated. We have a $400,000, not $412,000, not $398,000, a flat line item, $400,000 to Hoyoke Gas and Electric for street lighting. Now, part of that is because um, we're, we're paying over time for the uh, uh, new um, new uh, LED lights that were put in, renegotiate the deal with Hoyoke Gas and Electric, <coughs> stretch that deal out a little longer, reduce the payments to $375,000. But given some creative thinking, there's dozens and dozens and dozens of other places we could go. Uh, I'm going to quote the chairman tonight, earlier in the meeting, we can't spend money we don't have. The only reason we've got this money right now is because we have the highest <coughs> corporate tax rate in the, in the Commonwealth, or top five, all right? We're not bringing in any new business. We're scaring people away from Hoyoke because of it. And, you know, we've, we've waited, 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 waited. Uh, the coal plant's long gone. It's been gone for years now, and we're not realizing the growth. And this is why we're not realizing the growth. We scare business away with our tax rate. We've got to start cutting back. The only way to do it is stop spending that. We're, we're putting the whole burden of the budget we've got on the business community. Councilor Leahy. Yeah, thank you. Michael brings up some excellent points. Uh, the reason we get free cash is it's all the excess money coming from all the different line items uh, throughout the city. Um, uh, well, three areas that uh, I, I think where uh, our whole budget is made up of is uh, personnel and of course the services they provide such as fire protection police protection um, DPW uh, weekly pickup of our trash. These are services that I certainly won't cut into um, The next one is the schools uh, Unfortunately, we don't have any control over the schools now and we certainly don't have any control over who gets hired for the schools 
Um, you know, for my understanding is uh, they're getting to be very top heavy uh, with administration and whatnot. Uh, that's a concern for me. Also, uh, busing. We have to bus people throughout, uh, throughout Western Massachusetts, um, and that's a very expensive line item, one that we can't control. Uh, the last one is insurance. That's another item that we can't control. However, uh, maybe strategically, we can think about um, having that Section 19 committee go back and look at the GIC plan. I was talking to a school teacher in Springfield who is now underneath the, uh, the GIC plan from the city's plan, and she's paying less than she was before. This is something, an avenue that we could discuss to have our employees pay less and the city pay less. Um, uh, I do commend Michael Sullivan for uh, trying to think outside the box, and I think that we do a very good job when it comes to budget time, cutting out hundreds of thousands, if not in the few cases, a couple million. Thank you. Anyone further? Councilor McGivern? Just, uh, two, th two thoughts real quick. Um, you know, supplies are, are, are something that we always looked at. I said expenses, which are where supplies are in the budget. Our, our administrative assistant has paid for supplies out of his own pocket. That's not right either. And we cut supplies and we say there's excess money here, there's too much money here. Teachers buy stuff every day, every day for the students in their classroom. And teachers get trashed because the students don't pass MCAS. The teachers' hearts are there for their kids. It's time that other people are there for giving them what they need to, uh, to do their job. Um, street lighting, yes, it's a large account. It's a large number. Um, should we look at it? I have no problem looking at it. But I will not ask the gas and electric to tell us ratepayers, because we're not just taxpayers, we're ratepayers, that our rates are gonna, gonna be, our rates are gonna go up to offset what should be paid by property tax. And, and Mike, I agree with you wholeheartedly on the corporate tax rate. And, and there's no, no one that's fought harder than that over the years because we, we shoot ourselves in the foot when we, when we try to balance that tax classification vote every year. But the corporate tax rate and, and the residential tax rate are just a splitting of 100% tax rate, which is the true rate. And if we didn't do tax classification, the dollar figure we'd be paying per thousand you know, would be much, much different, much higher for the residents. So we're, we're fortunate that we can shift some because we are a residential community, but a planned industrial community. But at the same time, I think we shift too much. And I agree with you there, because if we do promote new business, new growth, that's going to help everybody in the long run. But at this time, I don't think this is the correct message to send to the mayor. Councilor Tallman. Yes, I, everybody realizes we have a tough time um, you know, fiscally in this community because we don't have the businesses that uh, we like to have, but we do have some new growth. Uh, we do have some, some businesses that came into town and, and, and want to take a stake in this. And some of it's going to take some time, you know, to get this, this, uh, this money in, into, the, into the city coffers. Um, I, I, I commend uh, my colleague, Mr. Sullivan, too, to try to, try to make some points that uh, we have to cut back and we have to live within our means. But, uh, you know, we only can do so much. And, and I think the big part is when we get the budget that we have to look at that and see where we can cut. Um, there's some costs here that we have that we'll never be able to, to control, and that's health care costs, and that's retirement costs that increase every year. So that's something that really is out of our control. Um, so to, to do this and to, to save the mayor to cut 25 or 1%, uh, at budget time, we all realize that he always he, he gets the, the numbers from the department heads, and, and he already does cut. And our job is to, to, to cut some more if we have to. but. We have to keep the services. We have to think creatively. Um, as Council McGivern stated, that uh, we haven't put no capital dollars into our budget in, in years. And, and every time we need a fire truck or, or six police cruisers, we have to, we have to bond or, or take from free cash. Well, now there's not going to be much free cash. So we have to look at that um, equipment, the DPW that has. Uh, a lot of times I see them picking up uh, recyclables and, and regular trash trucks. You know, we re need a recycling truck, and that's something that's in the budget that's that that could be done um you know through bonding and that's something that we have to to look ahead um and and, and we have to say we we got to start putting money aside for these big expenses to for for public safety and, and for our dpw so um it was a good discussion on this and, and we do have to live with our means but the the way that th this was this worded it's really difficult for for the mayor to actually cut two and a half percent or even one percent from the budget our job is to look at the budget and we get it into cut. Councilor Vacant. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I find myself in support of the spirit of this order, and I will be voting as such. What we have going on in our community right now, from my perspective, is a split community. We have a lack of communication between each fiscal department and our mayor in room one. And I think for us to request of the mayor to cut expenses that our citizens are working two and three jobs to pay, to fund the city and all of us who are working in the city, <coughs> I think to call for that spirit of collaboration in the face of the fact that we don't have enough money to fund the services that we all want to provide um, is a reasonable request. It isn't that it's the city council's job to cut the budget that the mayor gives us. It's the only option that we have as city councilors when the budget comes to us. So I think it's prudent and responsible and good fiscal management to ask the person who's putting the budget together to not come to us and say that it's a good thing that they kept the increase in the budget down below 5% but that in reality, we're in a deficit situation and we have to really start talking about what we can work together to provide for the community. And I think that's the spirit of this order. It's not an order to the mayor, it's a request to the mayor. Please don't set up the game so that you're gonna come in with a 5% increase, so then we have to sit here and cut thousands and thousands of dollars out of the budget, because it's the only option we have. Let's work on it together for the best interests of the residents of our city. And I think that's the spirit it's intended with, and so I'm supportive of it. Thank you. Council President. Thank you, Mr. President. I agree with uh, uh, Councilor Sullivan and Councilor Vacon. Um, I think that the taxpayers have to know, they have to have a voice in here saying enough is enough. I mean, we talk about fiscal watchdog. Well, what are we doing? I mean, you know, I can think of, we bought a Christmas tree, or somebody bought a Christmas tree. We have a new phone system that plays beautiful um, while you wait music when you're on put on hold now, which is fantastic because I like to tap my foot when I'm on hold. We have a beautiful television in the hallway. We're moving offices around. You know, playing round robin inside the offices of City Hall. The pictures of the city councilors and the mayors, we can stop that. We don't need it. It's unnecessary money that we're spending. Bang, there's, there's five cuts right off the top of my head. Jimmy Leahy pointed out the GIC plan. I worked for the city of Holyoke and then I got onto the GIC plan. I was covered exactly the same. Excuse me, I was covered exactly the same. My payments went down. But the problem is insurance companies are getting kind of, you know, they're helping the mayor out, the mayor helping him out. So everybody kind of gets a piece of the action. So that, that, should, that should stop. The ambulance service for the Holyoke Fire Department, we've talked about that numerous, numerous times, numerous times, but it, that hasn't come through. We're still renting floors from the school department. Um, Lynch is empty. The Thomas J. O'Connor facility that picks up the dogs for the city of Hoyoke and the dogs and cats, we've been paying them $300,000. No one even knows this. We've been paying them millions of dollars over the years. We could have converted part of Lynch or part of the geriatric authority to house these animals. But no, we, spend, we, we give our money to a different community to drive into Hoyoke to pick up stray do dogs and cats. That's the problem. There's no creative thinking taking place. And I think, again, this is simply a, a gesture telling the mayor that you really have to think outside the box. We're not talking about cutting services and this and that, but I mean, again, you're probably talking $50,000 with the Christmas tree, the TV in the hallway, the moving of the offices, the pictures of our, our, our faces on the walls. I mean, this, this, this is creative thinking. Nobody wants to get laid off. Nobody wants to see anybody lose their job because we all have to support our families. We're not talking about that. We're saying, Mr. Mayor, we are representing the taxpayers of the city of Holyoke. You have to do something. You have to think outside the box. Now there's rumors of a debit card going around somewhere floating mm -hmm. around that people are using. Treasurer's office is sending $10,000 to who, and the Lord knows only who that went to, with nobody's approval. So, I mean, this, this is a problem. This is sloppy financial management. And, you know, as the mayor, you got to create a budget. You got to think outside the box. You have to make cuts where cuts are being made. Not let's. We're not talking about fire. We're not talking about police. We're not talking about DPW. Many of us, though, will use that as a scare tactic to, to say, "Oh, we can't do that. We don't want to lose people on the streets." 
We're not talking about that. We're talking about fiscal irresponsibility that is taking place right before our very eyes in this city hall. Moving offices, what, would, what are we moving offices for? There's an elevator. Anybody that can't walk upstairs can use the elevator. I mean, pictures, Christmas trees. Jimmy Kern has been providing a Christmas tree to the city of Hoyle for 100 years, but somebody give it to, donated it to him and put him out there. That was, it was beautiful. It was a way, way for a community to come together. Somebody's land, they give it a tree. Jimmy Kern go gets it, he puts it up. It's been going on for years. It's a tradition. And now all of a sudden, we just, and $10,000 isn't a lot of money. I get it. But when you add up the 10,000, the 10,000, the 10,000, the 10,000, that's the problem. And then we just put the Community Preservation Act on, on, on all the property owners. Bad time for that. Great concept. But again, when it started under Salucci, it was a dollar for a dollar. It's down to about 13 cents now. And now we're not getting anything this year. So when Governor Baker looks at his budget next year, he's probably going to cut that lower too. So again, we continue to go to the businesses. We continue to go to the taxpayers. We've had no development. We've had no new growth. Talk to the guys that try to put the Dunkin' Donuts on Hamden Street. Do you think that they're, they're, you know how much money they spent on the notices, the public hearings after hearing, after hearing, after hearing. It's like we have a habit, our departments have a habit of making things difficult. And it's, and it's true. Talk to any business owner. Go buy a pizza from JP's. See, how, see, see, we'll see how, what their thoughts are. These guys are sweating, trying to make a dollar, and now the money that they donate to the baseball team for jerseys, now they got to donate to the CPA. The Hoyoke Mall, Macy's is closing its hours, right? If the mall goes, we're in serious debt. And that $13 a pay period, it's not $13 to the Hoyoke Mall, it's about 125 grand a year for the CPA. And you know what, they can't go up on it. Square footage is square footage. They charge what they charge, they can't go up on it. So I mean, you know, this is a simple gesture to tell the people of Hoyoke that somebody in this room cares about them, cares about their taxes increasing year after year after year after year. And this nonsense that's going on when they're seeing debit cards and Christmas trees. What, what, what are they thinking? They're thinking, you know what, maybe, maybe we should go somewhere else and do business. Councilor Roman. Yes, thank you. And I think my colleagues in, in this line of uh, discussion, I agree with my colleague, Councilor Sullivan, and I too, in this body, when I first came in, being someone new, when we're discussing the budget, uh, I filed a balanced budget amendment with the now, you know, former colleague, Kevin Jordan, and we had this very similar conversation. And all I'm saying is I read today a letter to the editor, and I met with the mayor earlier on today. We were discussing his points on creating and running the city like a business. I was a retail district manager. I could not approve a budget unless it was balanced. And I had to cut my, my expenditure lines and ensure that my revenue lines were conservative. And when I filed that balanced budget amendment, I remember that the mayor's office reached out and I remember my colleague, Councilor Vacan, I think Councilor Sullivan, we attended one budget subcommittee meeting in the last two years. And whereas I agree with some of my colleagues saying we can't send this message at some point this body has to send a message because as an outsider looking in when I hear about new growth in this city and yet we have a budget deficit and we talk about certain things like TIFFs we have 30-year TIFFs out there are we do we have sunset clauses or clawbacks if these corporations or businesses are not providing the jobs that they're saying that they're going to provide can we have them go back and retroactively pay and we know that the cost of insurance is going up and retirement's going up and yet we do have all these deficiencies and yet when we're talking about looking at other ways and departments and, and with all due respect to the chairman we saw how in our parking division we're losing money we're not collecting parking meters and yet we're going to raise the, the the rates of parking on main street and i mean on high street when i know the apartment dwellers who live there are going to have to pay more out of their pocket so let's look at each department department dive department and i do have to highlight and thank the planning department I love that five-year report plan. It showed me the efficiencies that they've done in that department, the revenue that they brought in that department. Uh, sorry, what? Building, building department. department, I apologize. Sorry, the building department, Damien Cody. That beautiful document, I think every department should produce. We really need to see what every department's doing well, where they're producing, where they're cutting, and he's on a bare bones staff himself, right? And I agree with my colleague, Councilor Bresnahan. Where are we spending money? We just shipped, and I know I can't discuss it, some money to another city today, and that's the, the last thing that I'll say about that. Are you telling me we can't find someone at $30,000 a year to handle lunch and breakfast? 
I, I disagree. I think that what my colleague is saying is correct, that we as a body budget time is coming, and last time I was a lot more forgiving, but we're going to have to cut to balance the budget because we left it still with a deficit that still hasn't been corrected, and when streets, street roads aren't being paved, when sidewalks still aren't being repaired, there's only so much CBDG money that's available for us to pave those roads, and what about the neighborhoods that fall outside of CBDG money zoning? Right? I just filed an order, I heard back from Mike McManus today, that that section of Main Street in front of Providence is owned by the state, right? and those potholes. I also filed an order today asking how much we're paying out, because I've literally in the last two years gotten so many calls from people that are going to small claims court against the city of Holyoke for potholes on Main Street. Why aren't they going to the state for that money, right? And so I want to know where in this budget can we save, right? And I agree with my colleagues. I'm pissed as hell when we have all of a sudden money being transferred here or there, and you're right. Our financial departments need to get together. So where's the compromise in that? Can we get a balanced budget? And then can we honestly talk about a CFO position or really having all these department heads enter to one person because there's no one communicating? How can we be efficient? I know every year I've been here, I've said in our comparison municipalities, we're a 13 member body, just like Springfield. They have two full-time staff members, we have one. They have their own places to meet, and I thank the president for giving us a place to meet with constituents. I can tell you how many constituents show up to this, this room, this chamber, looking for one of us to get answers. They go to the mayor's office, they're giving out my work phone, they're giving out my cell phone. We have other things to worry about, but when we're looking at this budget, I agree with the spirit of the sort. I don't think we should be denying it. I think we as a body should be really exploring, sending a message to the mayor to say, hey, where can we make cuts? Where can we sit down again? And what happened to that joint committee? That budget committee where it was supposed to be the finance chair, any member from this body who wanted to sit down with the mayor's office to look at the budget. And we said that we wanted to know it beforehand when department heads were submitting their budget in February and to show us, right? To show us, to look at every department. And this is with all due respect to Councilor McGivern and everyone else who's saying, if you want to cut, you're going to cut police and fire and so on and so forth. Talk to the people in the neighborhood and in the hood on response times and call times, right? When you're from Churchill and you're still waiting for an hour and 45 minutes right, for a call because there's drug dealers on your street, right? It's, it's taking time. What can we do to make those, those, those departments more efficient so the residents get their service as well? The fire department, we heard it today, and I thank Councilor Sullivan for filing that as well. Antiquated laws in our ordinance. Let's improve them. Let's make them efficient, but then demand from the fire department, what are you doing to save us on money, right, and the city? Overtime, we always talk about it, through the roof. When's the last time overtime was cut, right? And I know the police department's keeping it in line, but let's cut it down more. I think we could explore the whole budget without telling Councilor Sullivan and this body, we don't have the right to ask the administration to sit down with us. We did it for the balanced budget order. I don't think that denying it is the right message to send either because we are, like every corporation, they have a board of directors that they have to answer to. We are the equal balancing power of the administrative arm of this city. It's a plan B. It's a mayor, well, it was alderman, now it's city council. I've done my research. We have to be that check to that balance. I think it's a good message to send. I don't think it's a negative one. Let's just all sit down and talk. I did discuss with the mayor today his letter to the editor, and I said, hey, where's the compromise, right? You keep talking about a CFO position, but I'm not willing as a counselor, me, myself, I just spoke for myself, not for the body, I'm not willing to give up our appointment authority on assessor, on tax collector, on auditor. I think we should still have that power. The mayor was agreeable to that. Well, let's talk about that. That was a big step, and I, I called him, I made the appointment, I made the meeting, we were talking about the joining of the personnel department, which I thank Mr. President, you for filing. I've met with the city personnel director here, intern, um, Kim, who's retiring April 13th, folks. Retiring, leaving our city. We're gonna have another opening. Our city HR department has two staffers. School department has six. hg &E for 55 staff members has two full-timers. We're gonna go down to one. We are talking about that in our department, and that's the real reason why I went into the mayor, and he's agreeable to that. But let's look at efficiencies. We should have one centralized HR department. How much money could we save there? I don't think this conversation is negative. I don't think we should be denying them to vote against denying. I would like to see either complied with or us sending a letter to the mayor to say, hey, consider it, re-kickstart these uh, conversations, and let's not transfer out money where it shouldn't be transferred to. Let's follow the procedures. Thank you. Anyone else? Councilor Leahy. Just uh, under, uh, one of the things he had brought up, uh, Andy, uh, his very eloquent speech, is in our, um, in our ordinances under Section 2, 531, uh, uh, we're supposed to have a finance committee where the makeup is the mayor, the president of the city council, and three other city council members. Um, <coughs> my time here on the city council, we've never done that. Um, 
has there been any talk or I mean is that something fundamentally we should be doing we should um, but no one's approached us for that yeah well, um, just well. for everyone because we we've gone on this for a little bit just to remind us that there was the several whereas is the last part that's <coughs> missing from the agenda is the Hoyoke <coughs> City Council hereby encourages the mayor to submit a budget that incorporates a reduction in total spending of at least 2.5 percent so once again it's not telling him he has to it's an in, in essence asking so with that back to the chair <laughs> Councilor McGivern thank you mr. president uh, just a, a final thought or try to sum up my original thought is yes I understand and any arguments made this evening Councilor Roman would have loved to heard it at the finance committee meeting last week are, are eloquent and are spirited and, and no one is wrong Everybody is trying to make sense out of what are some very difficult times. And that is, that is the correct way to do it. But sometimes you got to listen to other people when they talk. And sometimes you got to understand that we're not wrong either because we're, our heart's in the same place as yours. What I'm fearful of is the way this is, is worded. We're encouraging the mayor to take the step that he can take and reduce personnel. And if he does it, Rounding out engine number two, we have no recourse as a city council to change that. If you want to send that message, 2.5%. We haven't even come close to cutting 2.5% of the budget. We're already you know, looking to use part of our free cash to offset this budget for what revenues that didn't come in at expected at projected levels. But I'll leave you with one more thought. I'm going to fight for services. If you want to fight to reduce services, that's your decision. But the last thought is, until this year, and I told you earlier, it looks like it's a good report coming from the independent auditors. Until this year, have we not made it through every fiscal year in the last 10 years? Have we not made it by working together, by fighting for revenue, by fighting for services? by making sure that people have what they need to buy supplies, by making sure that people are being paid the best we can pay them. We make it through the year because a fiscal budget changes every day, especially one as large as this city. And we have to work on those changes together. For the first time, well, for the first time, Councilor Lisi. Uh, thank you. So Councilor Roman just jogged my memory that we have another city employee leaving um, in, in a few months. We are seeing a very high rate of attrition in the city. People are leaving left and right. They're leaving on really bad terms, if you ask me. And I think that that is costly to the city. So if we do have any wiggle room in the budget, I would like to see us offer competitive salaries, higher talent, and start to begin to retain people in City Hall so that we are actually doing something that is streamlined, efficient, and attractive to new businesses. This is another part of the equation. We can start to offset the, uh, the tax rate if we are actually collecting a sewer fee that reflects the cost of operating our sewage department. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not just about you know, the numbers. It's, I mean, I think Councilor McGivern has put it very eloquently in the past you know, couple meetings. It's about the services and goods that we're providing as a city, and that costs money. And I, I think that you know, we, we are really losing a lot of talent, and we're losing people because we are not competitive in this department. We are not offering competitive salaries, and we are suffering. Our services are suffering. Uh, the morale in City Hall, if you ask me, is suffering. And, and we're seeing a lot of people leave, and I think that that is a, that is a huge cost, not only to the, the, the numbers and the bottom line of our budget, but to, the, uh, to our ability to even attract people to the city. Who's gonna to wanna to come and work for the city of Holyoke after they just read that letter in the paper? I mean, this is what people are putting out there, and that, that's going to be very detrimental to our city. Councilor Sullivan. Okay, thank you. Uh, to Councilor Lisi's point, uh, I couldn't agree more. <coughs> One of the ways maybe we consider and take a good look at this as we get into the budget process, which isn't what we're talking about right now. Uh, well, we are, but we're not talking about the individual line items. We're talking about the budget as a whole. Think about this. $350,000 we fund for the state portion of the Quinn Bill. 
That's 35 employees here in the city we can pay 10,000 more each to retain. Thank you on that. As far as making it through every fiscal year, we do make it through every fiscal year. And every year, and I've only been here a couple of years now, I, I see the, stabil, uh, the stabilization fund, it's going up, up, up. That's great, but our free cash is going down, 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 down every year till this year. We, we, we're, we're hoping, or it looks pretty good, but what's it, you know, it's gone down every single year. When, when are we gonna start making the cuts? When we go over the edge? That's it, I'm done. Councilor Vacant. Um, I just make two brief comments. One, I'm sitting here feeling extremely happy that we had an independent auditor in the city. I think it is a shame that he is gone, but if he hadn't blown the whistle on the stuff that's going on, we would yet be sitting here not knowing. And when you finally figure it out, when it all implodes, it doesn't mean it was good, it just means you didn't know. So I think it's critical that we have people who can function independently in their roles that aren't answering to one person who controls their entire ability to have safe employment or not have employment. I think the independence of the offices are critical, but there has to be lines of communication where these things can be brought to light before they get to the extent that they are now. And yes, it's unfortunate it went public, but it needed to have daylight on it so that we can fix it. And to the people's points that the structure, while it may be awkward in terms of communication, is functional if the people do the duty of their job, uphold the oath of office that they take, and work for the best interests of the citizens. So yeah, it's too bad it went public. It's also good it went public because now maybe it will get fixed. And so to cry that it's a terrible thing, yeah, it's bad, so now we fix it. And, but we need the people to have the independence and the ability to speak up. I just wish people didn't feel like their whole career was gonna get trashed if they did it. And the morale issue isn't all about the money. Because I'll tell you, we all worked with Brian Smith. That guy made pennies on the dollar. We worked with Dave Martins. That guy made pennies on the dollar. We never had a whisper of trouble, failure of procedures, money missing, unauthorized payments. It wasn't because they were making a ton of money. It was because they cared about the city, they had integrity, and they did their job correctly. Anybody who's in this game just for the money is in the wrong game. And if those are the people leaving, that's a good thing. But those people that I just referred to dedicated years to this city. They weren't in it for the money, they were in it for the people. And we need more people like that. Not just the people that are in here every year coming in for their $6,000 or $8,000 raise. And then the other people who are getting zip. Why, because they're the wrong people? You know, we need leadership, we need fairness of application of policies and laws, and I think we need independence to have it. And this body, in my view, is doing the right thing to stand up for the taxpayers and send, ask the mayor to work with us and everybody else in the city. There are huge morale issues in this city, and they start with room one. We need to all work together and make things better for everybody who works in the city and the people who are paying for the workers in the city. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Leahy is looking to speak again. He's already spoken twice. Rule 20 requires us to motion to suspend allow the councilor to speak a third time. Second, all those in favor, I, all I, opposed. I, yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. I'll be just brief. Uh, we just heard a comment about how uh, there's a very low morale uh, in the city hall, probably the annex as well. Uh, it's interesting because people haven't got raises in many years, um, some decades maybe, and other people. Uh, we just had the uh, city solicitor coming in and arguing to get the building commissioner a raise. Um, he wasn't in here arguing for everybody, but just one person. And, uh, you know, that's troubling. Uh, we should have. Uh, everybody getting uh, raises, not just certain people. Uh, we also hear that there's a, a, a good amount of people that are leaving. Um, 
well, maybe before we start looking at salaries, we should find the common denominator and why these people are leaving. Why are experts like Brian Smith leaving? Why is Josh leaving? Why did, you know, many years ago, Paul Healy leave? You know, we can go down the list and, and try to figure out exactly why good people um, are leaving us. Um, and I, I, I think that it's something that should be done. Um, you know, we have a good company, we have good people, uh, we do a good product, and we help great people. You know, at the end of the day, we're here to help our constituents, we're here to help the taxpayers, we're here to help every resident in the city of Hoyoke, and uh, that's why I'm here. It's certainly not because of the money, it's because I like, at the end of the day, helping somebody. Thank you. Councilor Lisi. Sure, the, the two last points that I wanna make are, um, number one, this body asked for um, an independent uh, consultant to come in and do a salary study for City Hall and it's sitting in committee somewhere. I mean, we, we tried to pass it out several times and that is an overview of all the different departments throughout the city and um, bringing them up to um, competitive market rate salaries based on what neighboring communities and other com communities like uh, Holyoke are doing. Uh, and, you know, it's it's... Sorry, I, I lost my train of thought there. Right, on the motion. Uh, on the motion. On one, the motion. One last one is Councilor Roman. Just a shameless plug. I refiled this evening. I know I uh, sent sorry. it out to all my colleagues. If you'd like to code, code join on, I did file an order this evening taking up the salary study again. I hope that we are able to bring that up again <coughs> where I agree with my colleagues on the council and in hearing from even the feedback from Kim on her way out it was a very thoughtful conversation. We're going to be meeting with Charter and Rules this Thursday. If anyone wants to come, I have a typed up review of Kim's feedback. Um, but the new starting salary posting for our personnel director is $40,000. So I don't know who we're going to recruit at starting around 40000 But I mean, hey, you might find someone. But I agree in that the salary study is important. So if anyone wants to sign on this evening, it's item number 39. Thank you. Just to complete my thought, if I may. All right, go ahead. So uh, the other thing was I, I filed an order several months ago asking that we do an independent analysis, that we hire a, a consultant to come in and look at the city's attrition rate. Why are people leaving? Maybe it's not salaries. Maybe it's something else. But I think that we need some data, and we need to understand this, and we need to build it? structures yeah. that are going to serve the city, serve City Hall, and, and retain, attract and retain talent. I think those are the two biggest things that need to happen for City Hall these days. Thank you. Um, just a quick question to the chair. Um, have you received anything from department heads with regards to their budget request? We, we passed that. I filed an order probably last year that all department heads forward a copy. The mayor didn't sign it. So we as a full body voted that all department heads give a copy of their budget but if request. If the mayor didn't sign it, it goes into it effect. It goes into effect. Yeah, he didn't veto it. He didn't veto it. So. No, we have not, I've not received anything. All right, so I that. Mean, I can. Well, okay, one did. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the good city clerk. So I. I, I if I would refer, you know, it's not in the jacket. Is there anything coming through? Our administrative assistant? I. That's why I asked. I haven't received it. I know if the department is we're just sending it to What you're asking is informational stuff to go into a committee that's been requested by the full city council on an ongoing basis. And I, I think that's very important, especially in finance. Mm -hmm. But All right, can we follow up on that? And in essence, every department head should be sending us a copy of their budget request for, for this year. OK. All right, so the motion, I'll go back. The motion is that uh, the committee was to deny the request that the city council hereby encourage the mayor to submit a budget that incorporates a reduction in spending of at least 2.5%. If there's no further discussion, motion is to receive, adopt the committee report, which is to deny. So if you're voting yes, you're voting to deny the request. If you vote no, you're voting against it. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? No. My ears are bad, so I'm in doubt. Motion is to raise your hands. Motion, once again, is yes, you're voting to deny the request. So all those in favor? One, 
two, three, four. So yeah, it's one of those things where the deny. committee is to deny the request, which is they're asking the mayor to look to cut 2.5%. So if you vote yes, you're voting with the committee, which is to deny that request. Roll call. So yes is no for no. <laughs> Roll call. Weird way of doing it, but that's how it works. Roll call. So it, Roll call. Three committees have asked for a roll call. Um, Under point information, yes. I voted against it in committee. I'll be voting for it tonight. Okay. So a roll call. The clerk will call the roll with regards to, once again, <coughs> if you're voting yes, it's to vote no. If you vote no, it means no. Sorry, that's the way it is. Clerk, call the roll. Anderson Burgos? <laughs> no. Bartley? No. Bresnahan? No. Leahy? No. LeBron Martinez? Yes. Lisi? Yes. McGee? No. McGivern? Yes. Roman? No. Sullivan? No. Tallman? Yes. Bacon? No. Valentine? Yes. Five yeas and eight nays. With your vote, you've denied the um, committee report to deny it. <laughs> Then would be means that it passed. We've approved That's six, the order. Six shays. So it, eight five. Eight, I figure that eight, eight, eight noes and five uh, five noes. Eight yeas. Yeah. I had four. What? Everybody's eight. Five. Well, I mean, eight this is a super complicated <laughs> math. So that it, it passed, basically, yeah, is that? Passed. Yeah. Yes. It's a confusing way of doing it, but that's how it works. Mm -hmm. All right, we're moving on. There was no committee reports for public safety. Well, just point of order, Mr. Uh, President. Yes. Do you want to just clarify the vote? So, in other okay. words, I, I'll try to clarify. In other words, we have now we have now supported a resolution to say to the mayor, cut the budget 2.5 percent. No, no, we did not. Send what we a request. did, encourage. we sent a request, <laughs> Councilor <Right>. Sullivan's request. <laughs> to encourage him to look to cut 2.5. He doesn't have to. Okay, same. Right. All right, so it's just right. a paraphrase. So, okay, right. I thought I was right. So I just want to clarify that vote. Thank you, Mr. President. It will be sent. So it will be sent. All right, with that, Public Safety Committee, Public Service Committee, the uh, Development and Government Relations Committee, <coughs> Charter and Rules, uh, Joint Committee is now said we'll, we'll keep those in the committee and we'll take them up for the next agenda because they're complied with. So there's no further reports from committees. On to motions and orders and resolutions. 19 from Councilor Vacan. That a department head who approves pay for an employee has exhausted all paid benefits and non-work-related injuries or issues be required to have a written approval by the mayor and approved transfer appropriations from the city council. Receive motion. and refer to ordinance. And I would just like to give a little background on this. Sorry. Motion is to receive and refer to ordinance. Second. Counselor? Um, in my questioning, I have learned that every department head has the authority to unilaterally make approvals of this sort. But when I asked if the, how the transfer of the money would work, because those transfers, if they're coming out of another account, need to come to us, it was unknown. So if a department head has that discretion, then it appears they're continuing to pay a person who's not at work out of their salary line. So if it really needs to come out of some other line, it needs to follow protocols. There needs to be an awareness throughout the whole that this is happening. It, you know, it doesn't seem that it should properly be under the discretion of each department head with the multi-departments that we have to be just unilaterally paying somebody their salary. Make a motion goes to finance. Well, would, would it require I, an ordinance or is well, it Well, I asked ordinance? it to go to ordinance. Well, I think, I'm not sure, I haven't had enough time to do the research to understand where their authority to do it comes from. <laughs> well, how about we make a motion to send it for it's finance, ordinance. they can take it up, and as always, we can always refer it yeah. to ordinance if an ordinance is needed. Would you like to do that, Counselor? Um, that's okay with me, as long as we're able to get a fairly prompt answer to it. Well, that, that share of finance is just, uh, oh, he's here. No, I'm just, <laughs> Ooh. I'm just kidding. I mean, Joe. I just, you know, because I just don't know. I just understand that it can happen. I don't know why, how, or, and I want to make sure there's procedures. All right, so the motion would be to send a finance. And a copy and, to ordinance. And a copy to ordinance. Thank just, you. And just a question yeah. to the maker of the order. Um, I'll, I'll follow up with you, Linda, but uh, who, who are we, or do we know who's being paid like this? I don't know 
how the person is being paid, and I'm not sure if the person is being paid. I don't know if the person may be coming in through injured on duty. I don't know. Yeah, and I don't even know right now if there is a person in that category. All I know is when I ask questions, I was told that each department head has discretion to make that determination okay. and continue to pay a person who is not at work. You have a copy to the law department to see if our department have, heads have that discretion, which I've never heard of myself. I'll second that. So the motion is... I'm not doubting what you've been told, Councilor Bacon. I'm right. just doubting who's telling you. All right, so... Current motion on the floor is to send to finance, copy to ordinance, copy to legal to get an opinion back to finance. Okay. With regards to this order. And um, Mr. Former Finance Chairman, <laughs> the jacket has been cleared of all things that were prior to the new committee that you appointed. And can everybody meet this on Monday the 5th? Because DGR, I believe, is meeting on the 26th, which is an important meeting for the DGR. Right. There's an important item on Monday the 5th for us. It's, uh, I'd like to take up and finish the uh, discussion on the Shannon Grant, because there's a lot at stake there. Yes. I, I can be there for the 5th. I'm it's, fine. Okay. Councilor Leahy. Yeah, I, I just want to give props where props are due. I, w I had the ability over the last two years to, to, to go to both the two chartered rules uh, subcommittee meetings, and they were run perfectly. Our new uh, finance uh, chairman is also doing a fantastic job in this. So I just want to give props to Joe. Thank you, Joe. There you go, Joe. All right, Joe. <laughs> what do I owe you now? <laughs> <laughs> so the motion, uh, and it was seconded, to finance, copy to ordinance, and uh, to legal for an opinion back for the fifth, right, Joe? Correct. Take, so for the fifth. If that's possible, but we, we'd like to take it up and because we're going to do the Shannon Grant and keep it rolling because I think it's both are important. All right, so all those in favor? All Aye. opposed? 20 uh, from Councilor Vacan, that the planning board please provide written minutes of the m meeting for February 13, 2018. Receive and refer to the planning board, and the only reason I'm seeking it is because I was there as the ward counselor and needed to run the ordinance committee meeting, so I don't know what happened at the meeting. So and motion people are to asking me. Receive, adopt, and a copy to ordinance. Is that what you're looking Please. for? Okay, so motion is to receive, adopt, with a copy to ordinance. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. All those Aye. opposed? President? Yes. If we could just suspend the rules to take up uh, the late files concerning the auditor and tax so collector can... items. Uh, motion is to suspend the rules, take up late files. It was seconded. All those in favor? Aye. All Aye. opposed? Give us a minute. We'll look them up. These are all the late files? Okay. Three, I think. There's a lot? Oh, jeez. Mm. Okay, I think I got them all. So there is late file A, which is a communication that we all received from former martyr Josh Pischel with regards to uh, February 15th, 2018, uh, regarding resignation. And I think we've all read that one. And make a motion to accept it, maybe send a copy to finance. Second. Motion Second. is receive a, cop, uh, a copy and send it to finance. Anywhere else? Just finance? All those in favor? Aye. All the opposed? So late file A to finance. Uh, there is a late file E from Councilor McGee. Order that the City Council uh, invite in order slash former order Josh Pischel to address his letter of resignation and the finances in the city. Can we make an amendment to that? Sure. We also add on Brian Smith because uh, according to his Facebook post, he's willing to do that. Right. And Dave Martins as well. So hold on, so there's an amendment to
So the amendment is to also invite in Brian Smith and Dave Martins. On that motion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those Aye. opposed? No. no. Motion on carries. The amendment? On the amendment, yeah, carries. No. These people don't work for the city anymore. I mean, it's kind of bizarre that they're interested in coming in and weighing in. To me, it's... it's Okay, so the motion currently, as is, item E, is that order that the city council <coughs> in auditor slash former auditor Josh Pischel to address his resignation letter, as well as address the finances that he points out. Also to invite in Brian Smith and Dave Martins. Motion is to... Which is under discussion? Um, well, hold on. Oh, sorry. First. Because it's you're taking up late files, it's a motion to act on it. or motion to act on it. So the motion is to suspend the rules and take action on a late file. Which Second. Is, so that's seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? So with that, Councilor Leahy. Uh, just very quickly, uh, the City of Hoyok does not do exit interviews like every other company does. So this is um, one way of the City Council doing an exit interview. Okay. Anyone else? Councilor Marvani. I... I agree in my company we do exiting interviews, but I'm concerned what we're opening to when this happens in a process because you have bargaining units that, that they have to kind of do the negotiations and things like that when something sort of happens. And what are we saying, you know, are we going to go equally across the border for everyone whoever has to come in front of us. It's my only concern. So. It's voluntary. They don't have to come. To? Okay. Well, well, so it's just, not, yeah, just, once, just, once again, on the order, it's to invite. Well, and, and I guess there's some clarification because it came up earlier. Anytime a counselor files an order, that's the way it's, the form says it, order that. We don't order anyone to do anything. In essence, it's an invite. We've addressed this before in a sense of should we change that <coughs> form to say invite or what have you. It, it's the standard form of order that, and then you say what you're looking for. It's not demanding anything. So here, I did draft it in the fashion to say, invite in. They could politely say no. All right, so the motion is to refer to finance. Was that the order? I, I missed it, so. Refer to finance. What is, did you make a vote on the amendment? With the amendments. The amendments we already voted on. Okay. So with that, to finance, all those in favor, Aye. all those opposed. F is uh, order from Councilor McGee, order that the personnel department um, advertise or post the auditor position starting as of tomorrow. The posting should be listed in business journals, mass municipal association, local papers, the city webpage, et cetera, wherever uh, we add. And hello, Hoyok. And, and hello, Hoyok. I'm not going to make a motion that. to uh, motion. receive refer to Committee on Public Service. Motion is referred to Public Service. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? What letter was that? That was E F. Sorry, F. First, first one we just took up was E. That was F. Last one with Point regards. Yep. Mr. President. Yep. I, I, Councilor okay. Bartley. Why are we referring that to committee? That was my question. Doesn't it have to go to personnel? We, that was the motion. Well, motion, motion to reconsider. Second. Motion second. is to reconsider. It was seconded. Under discussion? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'm, I, I like to make a motion that we re suspend our rules, receive, and adopt this immediately. Second. 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 Councillor McGivern. I, I get the point. The tradition, the way we've done it over the years, is we need a vehicle within a committee to take up the results of this order, which is the people who apply for the position. So the by referring it to committee, the committee makes sure that the ads go out, the proper procedure takes place, the, the uh, personnel department is behind it, and the instructions are given as to a number of different things. That's the way we've always done it. Um, if you want to do it by separate orders, by adapting this, we're going to need another order to take the results of the, of the advertising to be able to interview the candidates. Well, you could, under, just under discussion, I'm not debating. I know my rules. Uh, you could amend the order to say, one, order that the personnel post it and advertise it right away, starting tomorrow, and motion is to amend it to say that a copy be referred to public service in order to start the interview and process. Second. So, so moved. And just under discussion, we, we just heard... Councilor Bartley. We just heard a speech about shame on us. 
I mean, shame on us. I mean, I think we heard that, sheep, that speech from the uh, uh, 10 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago, from the same, from the same gentleman. So how about, how about we just move this forward uh, with, so with, with the amendment? So thank you. The gentleman would like to answer that to hold the that, gentleman. Hold on, let me. Oh, cut the BS. Well, well, hold on. I, I'm just writing up something. You know, hold on. And one second. Now, Councillor McGivern. I got it. If I remember correctly, in the speech I made earlier, and if I remember the process we used the last time we went to appoint the auditor, the Public Service Committee was not used as in our rules the proper way. The Public Service Committee was not used at all. And a, a full city council, which I commended when we did the interview process, was used for the auditor itself. But in the, to get to that point, there was no vehicle pushing to get those advertisements. And there was no vehicle, and there were certain decisions made without a committee or without the city council's input in terms of delaying. And that's what I referred to. And we let that go because in, in the process itself, we ended up at more than one time, some good candidates, some not quite ready candidates, but at least we had choices. But we didn't use this, this format. And this is the format that we've always used. It's the format that's in our rules. That's what the gentleman has On to say. On the motion. So just for clarification, Councilor McGivern, are you saying that by sending it out for posting and then <coughs> sending it to public service for interview is not the proper process. No, public service committee is the proper committee to use the vehicle to use for interviewing candidates. We always do that. Can we can we circumvent that and do it different? Yes, but in terms of, of as far as advertising goes, we've used one order and we've agreed, you know, as we're refer referring it to committee that the advertising should start. And, and if you want to separate the orders or your amendment is fine, I, I'm, I'm fine and comfortable with that. But, you know, we have to all be on the same page and get it going forward quickly. Okay. I understand the counselor's argument, which is by referring to committee, then you're asking that it be posted and go forward. Here, I, I think it's one the same. In essence, we are asking due to the severity uh, of the issue where we've now lost another auditor that we post it, that's, you know, just get it started, <coughs> and then refer it to committee, which I think addresses the same point. So the motion was that we add in language that the public service uh, department then establish or establish or set up meetings for interviews after the posting and resumes coming in. On that motion, is there a second? Second. Second, second. all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So the full order would now be um, receive, adopt, send to the personnel with a copy to public service. Second to that? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? F is now done. J, from Councilor Roman, McGee, Tallman, and Bresahan, order that the City Council and Mayor request and approve the use of the State Auditor, Suzanne Bump's office, to conduct and do an audit of all City finances for the City of Hoyoke. Can you add my name to that, please? Councilor. Hey, Councillor Leahy, too. Leahy. So, Sullivan. Oh, oh, no, <coughs> Sullivan. Motion received before the Committee on Finance. Second. Motion is are we going to receive and adopt or motion to receive send? Receive and adopt, Mr. President. Second. Motion is to receive and adopt. It was seconded under discussion. Councilor Roman. Yes, thank you. And I thank my colleagues for reaching in. I really want to thank former Councilor Patty Devine, even though she's not in this room. I know we all got that email from her, and that's what spurred me to file this, although I was thinking it. Um, I know I stated publicly, and I know we all have. Uh, this really stems back to me uh, around $10,000 being transferred out. And I really have concerns, as do many constituents that I've been hearing from, with regards to the financial team of the city. Um, and and, you know, like I said, I had a very productive meeting with the mayor today. Um, but for me, I have grave concerns. And I really applaud my colleagues for filing to get Sandra Smith, our treasurer, in here. Um, but I think that even we as the legislative body need to call out. And I think that this is great. So I thank all my colleagues for signing on. We need to get an independent. And even if the state auditor's office uses our current independent auditor's findings, we really need to get someone from outside to look in. And I know we've had a lot of discussions around the budget. But I know the people of this city, my constituents, homeowners, tax 
taxpayers, we're talking about saving the people money. 10000 being transferred out is not a drop in the dime, and I've said that before. And whereas, yes, I've heard others make the arguments of mistakes happen, not when, how many times has this happened in the department before? How many years has these individuals been a part of these cities, you know? And no uh, <coughs> training on fraudulent emails. And what are the processes for a transfer, bank transfer? I know I've had a million jobs from Dunkin' Donuts to yes, I worked for TD Bank for a couple of years of my life. And transfers are a very exhaustive process. So for me, I would really like to just see an independent audit of our city's finances, really see where we're going. And I applaud the auditor's office, uh, state auditor Bump's office for being crystal clear and giving us a clear vision of where our finances lie in the city and I would like to publicly state for the record, and I know I've said this and you all, I, I for one am, am just disheartened that we found out almost a week ago that that money was sent out. Um, and, and, and I do plan on, like I said, and I've said this before, attending every meeting, attending every finance meeting, asking questions. And if I need to call on someone to resign, they need to resign. But this is exactly why we need a recall provision for any four-year elected official. We should have had this on the ballot last time. It didn't get signed. It didn't go forward. And I would like to see this recall order go forward for our next municipal. I would even like to see it as a special election this year. Screw that. We heard from our state rep that we could get a ballot question on this year. And I think that if the legislature is going to approve anything, they should approve this. And yes, sorry, Brenna, we might have to get you guys to count those ballots at the end of the night. But I think the voters of the city of Holyoke would want this on the ballot this year. Should we have this recall provision order? I thank my colleagues for uh, signing on to this with us. And I really want to thank Patty Devine. She's like a voice of reason all the time um, and I really appreciated her email but this needs to pass it's just common sense thank you anyone else <laughs> Councilor McGivern just not having a copy in front of me could you just clarify the order's intent is it only about the issue of the alleged crime within the treasurer's office or is it about more uh, well, Council Roman filed it. Uh, we signed on. With regards to my sign on, I can honestly say that <coughs> it's uh, asking the state auditor to come in and do an audit of all the city finances. Right. It's not with regards to one aspect. So for me, I'll be crystal clear. Once again, I'm not debating. I'm just answering the question. I don't want to be accused of violating a rule here. So the real issue is I'm not here to point fingers. If mistakes are made, mistakes are made of which we have to then go out and ask someone else to do an audit of this because our auditor is left. We now have another person coming in. Prior to that, we had a tax collector leave. We had a treasurer leave. We've had department heads all over the board leave. And I've said from the very beginning when Chief Scott was here, when Chief Scott left, I said, you lost a department head, whether you're dealing with grants or budgets, we should do an audit of the department so that when the new person comes in, they start fresh and go forward. I even made that motion when uh, the tax collector, Dave Guzman, came in. We've gotten away from that. So from my view, all I'm trying to do is get the city back on track. This is not about pointing fingers. Let me be real clear about that. If a mistake was made, so be it. Let us get an independent third party state auditor in here to review everything because of all the changes we have seen and then move forward. Of which what I'm also proud or not proud but really uh, liking is that we have people like uh, Josh, Bellamy, Brian Smith who are all here to then meet independently with this state auditor to get a full view of what's going on. And, and Councilor Lisi just filed a late file as well, which she brings up another good point, which would be Melanson Heath. We'll take that one up and up. Bring everyone in, see what happened. Once we get the report, now we're gonna go forward. So no blame game, let's just fix the problem. That's the goal here. I, uh, that's that's the intent, Councilor. I appreciate the clarification and I appreciate the fact that you're not debating. Um, and I agree, and I agree with what you're saying and I just, I want to make one thing clear is audits take time and money and audits cost money and it's the city that's going to be paying for the audit even if the state comes in we already have one independent auditor in in there and we haven't seen those results yet and if we're going to bring in any number of auditors if we need to we're going to pay for it i just like to get some more details before we take the final vote and that's why i had made the motion to refer to committee Mm. Not that I disagree with the intent. My uh, in response to that, my view is due to the severity in order to make everything transparent and open to the public. Instead of just reading about it in the paper, 
Mm. Finally get the answers that this city needs with regards to all the issues we've been seeing. That's what we're trying to do. If it costs some money, so be it. At least we get put back on track yeah. as to the proper procedure and things that we should be doing to make sure we track this money correctly. So therefore, instead of sending a committee and debating it, my job is to try and get us back on track and therefore receive, adopt, send to the auditor and get the process started. Councilor Bartley. Okay, yeah, thank you, Mr. President. I just want to, uh, let's, uh, I guess I can't call him a gentleman, but my, my friend Joe, um, but my friend Joe's r right on some things uh, and, and this point, and I think it should go to committee or should be tabled here um, because I think we have to get clarification. So I had a conversation with uh, Nelson, who's a maker of the order, uh, through Patty, and uh, I had a conversation with the director of planning today in the state auditor's office, and he asked me to, and he's the one that schedules uh, state audits, which, by, by the way, are not, I mean, Joe's right in the sense that there'll be staff time costs, but there's no fee payable by, there's no payable to, to the city for a state audit. So there's, there's not, not going to be an invoice at the end of the state audit, okay? So let me, let me make that real clear. There's, no, there's going to be time for staff, and that, that will be the, the cost of the city. So it's not like Molly Anson Heath or something like that. So the, the director of planning asked that, that uh, the council president and maybe the finance chair and maybe the maker of the order have a conversation with him uh, prior to this being sent to the state auditor's office so that he can get understanding as to the potential scope of the audit. So I would just ask the council discretion, either we send it to the finance or we table it right here at city council for, um, for a two week period. Um, just so, so you, the, the council president, and, and Joe, the chair of finance, and Nelson, the uh, maker of the order, can perhaps have a conversation with the um, director of planning for the office of the state auditor, with whom I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you their number if, if you. So does choose. does it matter if we table it and call him, or do we does not approve it, it tonight and then we call him tomorrow? It did matter with to him. the scope. It did matter to him, Todd. Why? He, he, he didn't explain why. He said he said he'd rather have a table and, and understand the scope first before you go ahead and improve it. Yeah, I think we need to go ahead and get this done tonight. We, we've got to do something. We've got to act a lot faster than waiting two weeks, uh, putting it off, having other committee meetings. We've got to do something to restore taxpayers' confidence in the city's financing and uh, financial team. Um, I have no problem calling him tomorrow and describing the scope, which really I think is easy. It's all city finances. We want a broad view of everything due to the turnover on everything. Well, it can't be any more clear. So the motion was, if there's no further discussion, I'll make a motion to table. Motion is table. Second. Motion is table is seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? No. no. Noes have it. Show of hands. Motion is to show hands. Motion was to table it. If your motion, if you raise your hand, you're voting yes to table the item. Please raise your hands. State, state. Three, yes. 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 One, one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. Motion fails. Motion fails. So motion. Need that number again? I, I thought I saw six. seven hands. Yeah. Six. Oh. To table, right? Table. Seven, right? One, oh, two, six. three, four, oh, five, six. six. Now we have seven. I thought he had it. So now the motion is to table. The motion is to table and be on the next agenda. No, okay. <laughs> uh, this just came in with regards to the auditor's position order, uh, item late file number K, order that the city council invite in our outside auditors, uh, Melance and Heath, to participate in the conversation with the former city auditor, Josh Pischel, former city auditor, Brian Smith, and former city purchasing director Dave Martins. So just to be clear, we have somebody doing an audit of our finances every year, and so <coughs> I would like to see them as part of that conversation. So finance. R yeah, Fine. receive sent to finance. Sorry. Councilor McGivern. And I agree, but I think we do have to get out if there is part of their scope of services already. That's fine. If it's beyond that, because the audit. Is uh, the current the last audit is beyond that and has been presented? I just like to know if it's going to cost us. Do we still go forward? 
to answer that, they actually have in the contract to come before the Finance Committee once a year to address the report. <coughs> so we can count it as that and not be charged. Yeah, that sounds great. That makes a lot of sense. Yes, yeah. The motion is to second to send the finance. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? What letter was that? K. That was K. Okay, thank you. You said anything to do with the auditor's position, uh, Roger that. Just to hear the... All right, so let me make sure on the late files. I have one. Mr. President, while, yeah, yeah, oh, sorry. while you're looking for that, I just I just want to clarify, um, uh, Councillor Bartley, yeah. when when we were talking about the um, planning director, just so for folks to know at home, we're not talking about our planning director for the city of Holyoke. We're talking about uh, yeah the state level. No, I, this is I how rumors start that you know that apparently we couldn't you know the rumor would be that we couldn't request an audit because our office you know our, our director for the planning office was you know didn't want to do that until he was contacted so I just wanted to make sure that that's what we're talking about so that rumors don't start yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> thank you we have late file C from Councilor Vacan ordered that uh, I have called the Office of Inspector General seeking an investigation of the financial management of our city and asked the City Council as a whole to join me in a request for an investigation. That would be from the Inspector General's office. Um, if Councilor. I Thank you, Mr. President. The reason that I called that office is because they look at the use of the money. An audit will show us the path of the money. And so I think in order to restore the confidence of the community, they have to also feel confident in the use of the money. Um, and I've received a communication from a person doing an outside event that has stipulated to me that the money that was taken, for example, for the Christmas tree out of one department account was to be used for another event for which the money is not now available. So. These are the kind of concerns that are getting raised that the Office of the Inspector General looks at. If they deem it rising to the level that would meet their investigation. So I'm simply asking for the support to refer it to them so that they can make a determination whether they would pick it up and come in and look more deeply. So motion is to receive, <coughs> adopt, so send to the Inspector General? Yes. Or, okay. Motion is sure. to receive. Oh. Mr. President, I'm going to abstain. Okay, motion is to receive, adopt, and send to the Inspector General. There was seconded. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? I'll tell you later. Thank you. No. Thank you. I just got to take notes now. That is all I can see for late files with regards to the auditor. There's other requests, but it's not specifically on point to the auditor, so we'll get to those mm -hmm. after if that's all right. So we'll go back to motions, orders, and resolutions. Uh, we took up 20 that was received and adopted and sent a copy to ordinance 21. From Councilor Vacan, that the city solicitor provide a legal opinion regarding whether a permit for a project can be extended mm -hmm. beyond the initial approval by a board if the law has changed the approval process at the time of the request for an extension. Councilor um, Receive, adopt, and refer to legal. It's just to clarify because it's very rare that this comes up, um, but I would just like to have a definitive opinion on it. For future reference motion is to receive adopt uh, sent to legal with a request to send back to the full city council an opinion all those in favor Aye. Aye. All those opposed. Aye. item 20 22. 22 and 23 is a package second 22 and 23 suspend the rules take up as a package all those in favor Aye. Aye. Opposed. Aye. 22 is from Councilor Bartley. Just abbreviated reading, Mr. President. The HPD enforced traffic ordinances, 
and for 23, HPD set up traffic enforcement at certain areas in certain times. Okay, so let's refer to HPD and copy to public safety. Second. Motion is to receive, refer to HPD, copy to public safety. Public please. safety. Do you want to receive and adopt, or do you want to just receive and send the committee? Uh, Let's say and receive adopt. and adopt, sure. and then receive and adopt. Yep. Copy to public safety. That'd be great. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Item 24 from Councilor Bartley that the law department issue an update on the city receivership program by the end of March 2018 and forward to DGNR. Yeah, so it's just uh, receive, ad adopt, uh, re refer to um, the law department. <coughs> Motion is refer to, to the law department and copy to DGR, please. <laughs> Motion is receive, adapt, send to legal, copy to copy DGR. DGNR. Yeah. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. All those Aye. opposed? Aye. Item 25 from Councilor Bartley that the DPW superintendent and the mayor look into making Route 5 and Crozier Field area, McIntosh area safer for pedestrians. Um, Right, so if we could uh, refer this to um, receive adopt, refer to uh, uh, what did I write in here? Uh, the HPD, DPW, and the mayor, and copy it to ordinance committee, please. This motion is to receive, adopt, uh, refer to HPD, the Department of Public Works, and the mayor, and then uh, copy to ordinance, please. Copy to ordinance. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? 26 from Councilor Bartley. Hoyle has to get serious about cleaning up its image. Recommend that the mayor, that the streets are clean every street at least once annually and that uh, many streets as possible twice annually. Yeah, uh, we talked about this in ordinance. So uh, this is receive, adopt, uh, refer to the mayor and DPW and copy to public safety, please. Also, if I could. It's United Water that does. It's United does Water. It's in the Suez. contract that they yeah. should Suez. be doing this every year. Yeah, Suez. Yeah. So or friendly whatever. amendment oh. is and, and that to, we send to, it to uh, Suez. Uh, yeah, was it GDF Suez, Jimmy? GD, yeah. I don't know. But Suez, if I could be added on as yeah, a yeah. co-sponsor, David. What's that, Jimmy? Can I be added on? Oh, cool. yeah, yeah, you know that. It is in the contract, though. They should be doing that at least once a year. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, they, I, uh, I, I think I, they do it once uh, a year, Jimmy, uh, but I, I don't think they're, uh, I, I like to see them twice a year. Yeah, oh, I echo your comments. Yeah. All right, so motion is to amend and add in Suez. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Councilor McGivern? I, I agree with the order, and I wish it was still Suez, but I think under Councilor Jordan's former order, we removed this from that uh, that contractual obligation right. through the budget process. So is it back with DPW? I, I, I'm just going by memory. I, I voted against it because originally I was the one that, long before Suez, that had asked the, uh, the sewer um, plant to uh, to do the sweeping because it makes sense because it keeps sense. stuff out of the sewers which keeps stuff out of going into being removed from the sludge but Councilor Jardine had filed this through the budget process last year to reduce this part of their uh, their obligation through a budget cut well they have them on there if they don't have it they don't have to comply right um, oh, so copy money. to DPW and mayor of which whoever has to do it now will Hopefully, do hopefully it. comply with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we'll, we'll track in public safety, right? Yeah, it's all copy, copy of public, public safety. safety. Thank you. It's funny that this order is here because I got a call the other night with regards to this specific issue, and they want it mm -hmm. two to three times a year because sure. certain drains are really bad. They're probably watching an ordinance meeting the other night. We were talking about it. <laughs> so with that, um, it'll be done for March seventeenth. March seventeenth. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so receive, adopt, and uh, to public safety, all those in favor, all those opposed. Aye. Number 27 from Councilor Barley, order that in accordance to Mass General Law 30B. Yeah, just, yeah, just abbreviate reading, Mr. President. So th this will just go to, uh, that's close enough. Th uh, just refer to a, a DGR for a uh, for hearing. This is for that building on... Um, this is to declare parcel 278 Pine yeah, Street surplus. I, I can't remember. Uh, Right, yes. Well, the reason we're doing that, Mr. President, well, the reason we're going to consider doing that, Mr. President, is there's a organization in Holyoke that is interested in procuring 
the building adjacent to the Yankee Peddler <laughs> for a dollar and then jacking it up and moving it to this location. So, so the first step would be to declare this parcel surplus and then we'd have to look at um, you know, what, what the offer is on, on buying it. So Could I be added on to that as well? I spoke to the uh, gentleman that's interested in doing that as well. Adding on, Councilor Leahy. Ben Sullivan. Myself. Me, me as well. Sullivan. Valentin. Valentin. Yep. Myself to like Gladys. To I'd like to get signed on to that. Martinez. Anyone else? That's why I call you. Yeah. Why don't I just say everyone? Everybody. If, if I could through the chair, until, uh, yep. one of the interesting things is from where it is now to where uh, this person wants it to go, there's not one overhead um, wire. So it would be a much easier trip for, for it to be moved. All right, so the motion is to send a DGNR, adding everyone's name to it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Item 28 uh, from Councilor Leahy, McGee, and Roman. Uh, order that the Honorable City Council invite in fair to give a, her a proclamation on behalf of the Sporting Goods 90th birthday. Wow. Give to adopt and send to Mrs. Allen for a proclamation. The motion is to receive and adopt, and do you have a date for that? or? I'll talk to Betsy. Okay. So, motion is to receive, adopt, and get the proclamation when Councilor Leahy yeah. is yeah. ready. Should we give our t shirt sizes? <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Mm -hmm. Item 29 from Councilor Leahy, vacant, and vacant. Vacant twice. <laughs> it's supposed to be Roman as well. <laughs> oh, Roman, okay. Make an amendment to put Councilor Roman. Make a motion to receive adopts in the ordinance. Order that the city council be notified by department heads uh, on all allegations of missing funds within three business days. Just under so. discussion, uh, uh, our section 2-503 wasn't uh, here to. We gotta make sure that uh, there's proper procedures. So once Second. again, council, I receive adopt or what do you wanna do? Receive adopts in the ordinance. To ordinance. Second. Motion is to receive adopts on the ordinance. It was seconded, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, 30 from Council Leahy, McGee, and Vacan. Order that Roman the City well. Council invite in the City Treasurer and the Police Department or their representative to a Public Service Committee meeting to discuss the procedures and protocol for transferring funds uh, within the Treasurer's office to other departments. Can you add me to that order, please? Yeah, I was going to say Councilor Roman, too. Councilor. That, that was the mix up. <laughs> All right, that's. Those people have been added on. Motion to just uh, receive and send uh, to the um, public service committee. Second. Second. Motion is to receive and refer to public service. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Should there be a copy to Sandra Smith on HPD? Well, they'll be invited uh, in. Be you can send a copy. Well, I'm saying so that the ball's rolling and it's. Yeah. <laughs> so. Right. I wasn't trying to be funny. <laughs> So the motion to, about the to reconsider roller. is also to add copies to the departments, which is HPD and Sandra Smith. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, item 31, or that the city um, put a street sign, uh, Montgomery Ave, which is missing near River Terrace. <coughs> Motion is on this one. DPW. Is, is to receive, adapt, and send to DPW. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? 32. That the missing sign at Wyckoff Ave be replaced. So make a motion to receive and adopt and refer to DPW. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? <clears throat> Councilor McGee, or at the HD and East, install a street light at the corner pole located at Alma Road and the corners of Jarvis Ave. So, receive and adopt. Motion is to receive and adopt. Refer to HD and East. Refer to HD and I could be leaving a copy to the mayor as well. Second. Receive, adopt. HD and Usually quick Cap those. Copy to mayor. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? 34 from Council Roman. Order that the city of Hoyoke, through the ordinance created and draft adopt the uh, dwelling units language to the city charter. Is this going to charter and rules? Ordinance? 
So this is to ordinance. Change my vote. Thank you. Any discussion or just no? go ahead, Councilor Roman. Uh, yeah, no, just quickly, uh, believe it or not, I got a phone call for an individual looking to move into the city with their tiny home, and so we don't have any ordinances on the books. And so they were looking in Ward 2 and said, hey, how do I move my tiny home into your fine ward? And I said, well, let me find out for you, and uh, there's no laws on the books. And so versus a squatter with a tiny home, I figure let's, let's you know, get ahead of the cart here before they start rolling in. So. All right. Is that a parking oh, lot close to Nelson? Can Motion I just make is to that? receive and send or uh, Councilor Lee. Just a friendly amendment. It's a, it's an ordinance change, not a charter change. So it should be. Yeah. No. You got it. Okay. Yeah. It's the motion is to receive and send to ordinance. Second. All those in favor? All those opposed? <clears throat> Number three, item thirty-five from Council Roman Leahy. Order that the City of Hawk approve a penalty fee for throwing trash in public waste recycles of $100 for individual home waste, 250 for business waste. If we could, uh, I would send it to the committee for the discussion just because I want DPW to come in and we're having discussions around banning plastic bags and other items to alleviate trash. So I would mm -hmm. like to hear from Mike McManus from DPW on the signage and how much that'll cost us. So if we could send it to ordinance, um, we'll just have the discussion in there. Motion is to receive, send to ordinance, copy to DPW. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? If you notice, all my recommendations are listed, Mr. Chair, Mr. President. Bold. <laughs> I, I'm just following make, the, we're just forward. making sure here. <laughs> All right. So number 36 that the uh, from Council Roman that the city of Hoyoke amend its marijuana legislation to include uh, equal provisions based on similar programs instituted in the city of Oakland, California. Uh, this is recommended to send to ordinance committee. Yes. So the motion is to receive and send to ordinance. Can you add me to that order, please? And Councilor. Thank you. Adding Councilor Valentin. Anyone else? Motion is to receive and send to committee. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 37. From Councilor Roman, that the City of Hoyoke amend through ordinance or charter, whichever is deemed appropriate. Any and all host community agreements made uh, by the executive must be ratified to approve the city council in order the items take effect. Recommended that send the ordinance committee or charter and rules. What's your preference? Um, I spoke with the law department um, and we're actually going to send it to charter and rules because it might be under the executive's authority provision. Um, and under discussion quickly, Mr. President, I just filed this because, you know, there's been mentioned in this room that, you know, we've brought back boss politics to the city of Holyoke. And I figure one way to alleviate that is that our counterparts in Springfield and Chicopee and other municipalities, any host community agreements that are made by the executive with businesses um, have to be ratified by the city council. So for example, all these marijuana companies coming through, all these other, you know, specialty host community agreements, or like I said, when I first got into office, because of the Neighborhood Association exploring that $10,000 a year was being donated in cash to the city to find out that all that money was going towards one event, and yet we were struggling in our neighborhood as a result, I think this would help us with transparency and to alleviate that notion of boss politics if everyone gets to vote on that host community agreement. Okay, so the order is to receive, or the motion is to receive and send a charter and rules. Second. All those in favor? Present. All opposed? Yep, Councilor. Just a, a clarification. The, um, I, I believe this is in existence in terms of, and it's a good order, that the uh, any host agreement that would bring revenue into the city would require an appropriation vote by the city council. And certainly that would be the time when boss politics would take place when certain wards would outrule the at large and we know where the money's going. <laughs> and we'll discuss it in committee. 38 uh, from Council Roman and Leahy that the law department provide a dollar amount. Sorry, motion to suspend the rules and take up 38 and 39 as a package. Cool. Second. Second. 38 and 39, suspend the rules, take up as a package. All those in favor? Aye. All the opposed? 38, I just read. Oh, no, sorry, it's 38 like and 40. That. 38 yeah. and 40. They're different committees. I thought they put them together. No, 38 and 40, sorry. <coughs> They're similar. No. I'm sorry. 38 and 40. Motion and clarify is 38 and 40 as right. a package. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All the opposed? That was Add my name to those as a package. And With the maker's counselor. permission. Yeah. Lisi. To, to both, correct? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Of which the first one was the dollar amount on small claim settlements for potholes, specifically on Main Street 
No, it's, sorry, 39 and 40. I thought we, we just... No, 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 no. We amended it to say 38 and 40. Ah, I see. So then I'll skip it. I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in the 39, so... So do not add Councillor Leahy to 38 or 40. It'll just be 39. Okay, so 38, 40 potholes on Main Street. Uh, 40 is from Councillor Roman and Leahy. Order that the DPW repair and completely replace the entire stretch of Main Street. Temporary patching uh, does not really work. So motion is to uh, receive, adopt, send to public safety for both of them. All right, so motion is receive, adopt, send to public safety. All those in favor? Aye. Mm -hmm. 39. From Councilor Roman Leahy, adding on Councilor Lisi, order that the City of Hoyoke take up and approve the salary study completed in 2014. Uh, recommended that be sent to the Ordinance Committee. So receive and send the ordinance. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those Can opposed? I be added on to that one, please? Uh, with, uh, Could I be added on also uh, to that order number 39, please? If the maker. Councilor Tallman, LeBron Martinez. Anyone else? Councilor McGivern? Me and myself, too. Anderson Burgos. Valentin Anderson Burgos. And the motion, once again, is to receive and send to ordinance with all the names being attached. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? Uh, back to late files, I do believe. Late file B, uh, order from Councilor Leahy, uh, Bresnahan, and Roman, order that the mayor's office provide the city council copies of the last 12 months of statements on the city credit card. Additionally, please provide information on its origin, who maintains the custody and procedures <coughs> it uses, such as who may use it, one to sign on, how payments are made, and how charges are accounted for in the budget. Can Motion. I be added to that, please? Adding on, Councilor. Can I add me, please? So, thank you. Can I make a friendly uh, motion, amendment rather? I'm sorry. Okay. Nelson. It's just, can we, if it, does it say credit card or debit card? If it says either one, can we just make sure it's it credit both. card and debit card? Yeah, yeah, just so in case there is a debit card but not a credit card or a credit card and not a debit card. So the motion is to amend from credit card to then also add in debit card. Correct? So it now reads that the mayor's office provide the city council a copy of the last 12 months of statements on the city credit card slash debit card. Friendly amendment, Mr. President, can we include the treasurer's office? Because I was told that that's where the card all right, in so question on, lies. On the first amendment to add debit, all those in favor, Aye. all those Aye. opposed. New amendment is to add in after mayor's office, treasurer's office as well. That the mayor's office slash treasurer's office provide the city council with copies of the last 12 months. Is there a second to that? Second. All those in favor? All those opposed? B then would be to receive, adopt? But oh, oh Councilor Vega, I'm sorry. Thank you. I think the bills are maybe sitting in the auditor's office from the credit cards. So I just think we need to get them from wherever they are. Because if we just ask for the wrong office and then we don't get them, let's, you know, <laughs> let's just get them. And I, and if I recall correctly, I can't remember if it was Finance Committee or the full body, but about two years ago, it was stipulated to us from the legal department that there were no credit or debit cards in the city held by any employees. So I'd like to know when these were issued, who issued them, and under, also, if what, but. The origin, right? You said the origin. Did you say the yeah, well, origin? I'm sorry, I may have not months. heard you. No, 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 we'll, we'll get clarification. You, are you, you can keep going on that. No, no, I don't want to repeat. No, 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 you're, you're right. So I'll read it again so we're all on the same page. The mayor's office, now the amendment, the treasurer's office, provide the city council copies of the last 12 months of statements on the credit card slash debit card. So that's what we've asked. Now you're asking to add on mm -hmm. the, How, the auditor or any other department yes. with and regards to this information. When did the accounts get opened? Who opened them? Under what authority and when? Because two years ago we were told there were none. All right. 
So the amendment is to add in, after now treasurer, auditor or other departments with the information. I think that covers every department. So on that amendment, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? The rest of the order, Councilor Vacant, does request what you're saying, who maintains it, the procedures, so on and so forth. And for clarification, I was the one that filed the order two years ago, and it was Kara Cunha that gave me the opinion, oh, okay. saying that there was no <laughs> debit card in the city. Well, thank so you for whether or not that has back. changed from when she gave me my opinion, I do not know. So this is to receive, sent to those departments, is there a certain committee? Mr. President. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor McGivern. Finance. <laughs> I thought the motion was to adopt. Well, if, if well we that's are, what I'm asking. Is it we, receive, adopt? We've already or? amended and debated. We have to suspend the rules. We did suspend the rules. On this when one? We, when we took up late files, we suspended the rules. Oh, that, that has to be case by case. Yeah, no. case by case. We, that, that's one item at a time. Well, we, the way we made the motion. Now, if you want to change well, it, that's fine. So if well, you want to do well, case by case, I, I, I won't suspension. Say. That's fine if that's what you did, but it should be case by case. All right, so the motion Fair is No, no, it's fine. If it's done, it's done for President? tonight. Sorry, um, would it be possible to make an additional amendment that has a time frame on it? Right. So for the next meeting, I mean, two weeks should be enough time to track down statements. Mm -hmm. Everything's online these days. So if I could make an amendment that the that that be communicated to us um, by the next city council meeting. Second. So at the end of the order, and provide within two weeks on that amendment. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Aye. With regards to Councilor McGivern's request, and I will say yes, we have to suspend the rules to take final action, which would be Moved. motion to receive. <coughs> motion is to receive and adopt and send to all the departments. Second. And a copy to finance. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? That one's done. Late file D. Order that from Councilor Vacant. Order that. Is this the same? No, it's actually different. So, order that the credit debit card held by any person be turned into our city solicitor and those accounts be frozen until the investigation audit is completed. And the rest and of it. expense of the city be made uh, by check request with proper authorization. Um, under, if we could suspend the rules to receive and adopt. Second. Motion would be to suspend the rules, receive, adopt, take final action. Councilor Bacon. Yes. Um, I guess we would refer this to the law department since they were the ones that reported to us in the past that they didn't exist. I just, I'm not trying to stop the business of the city. I'm just trying to ensure that proper procedures are followed. And I work for a multi-million dollar corporation. They have no credit cards. They do everything through check request, and they manage to function. So, till we know what's what, okay. that's my recommendation. Councilor Lisi, can you just repeat the order? I just want to understand the, the scope. Order that all credit slash debit cards held by any person be turned into our city solicitor, and those accounts be frozen until the investigation slash audit is completed. Any expense of the city is to be made by check request or proper authorization. Or warrant. I mean, or, what, what if or warrant, whatever proper but we'd have language to amend that. Yes. is. So I would just you know, note that, again, we have um, Melanson and Heath doing an audit every single year. I mean, I would imagine that if there was a problem with having a, a debit card of some sort, that that would come up in that audit. So it should be a very simple answer. You know, what does our audit say from Ellen and Heath about this debit card existing? Is yeah. that, is it, I mean, to me, it's, it's claiming that it's already an improper procedure when we don't really know that yet. I, Councilor Reagan. Um, I would just note that we had the purchase of a $10,000 Christmas tree that none of us knew about until after it had happened and that the money has been taken out of two budget lines for which the money was dedicated to other things. Right there, you have a problem. I would have thought that after that all hit the press, folks that were doing that kind of thing would have stopped. However, in the auditor's resignation letter and in other correspondence I've received, I'm hearing there's many credit card bills 
and other things sitting in an office. Properly or improperly filed, it needs to stop till somebody can look. Thank you. So, anyone else? Motion is to suspend the rules, receive, adapt, take final action. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Now the motion would be receive, adapt, and send to a copy to a committee or you um, just I want. think it should go to this. I know it's going to legal. Solicitor but with a copy to finance. finance. Mm -hmm. Copy to finance. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? E has been done. F has been done. G, uh, late file, order that park and rec, the Park and Rec Department and the commissioners provide the city council with an update on the permitting status for the uh, Hispanic Family Festival. Just send to, I'd say send to finance. finance. Or, yeah, finance, right. What did, it, <coughs> what did it come from? I'm sorry. Counselor, I, I filed it, ordered that park and rec, and the commissioners provide us with uh, the status of the <coughs> Hispanic okay, Family okay. Festival. Where does it stand? What, what are the outstanding issues? Okay. Is that upcoming this year? Yep. Thank you. Do we add the fire department to that? Motion is to amend and add the fire department as well. All those in favor? All right. opposed? Fire department. Um, send it to finance, Joe. Or would it be public service, public safety? I think that's public safety. Public safety. The motion would be send it to public safety. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Uh, H from Councilor McGee order that the auditor and treasurer confirm that the five thousand budgeted for the stage and sound for the Hispanics Families Festival. Uh, has it been allocated to the festival? Response to be provided to us as soon as possible. Send that to public safety as well. Fine. Well, it, it's kind of similar to the other order, so trying to bring them together. It's one and the same. Yeah. Same, yeah. So public safety. Sec yeah. All Second. in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? I, from Councilor McGee, order that the DPW Park and Rec provide an update on the tennis courts. Mackenzie Field House, the pool project, so that'd be Pooley Up Pool, and the timing for completion of all of these. Uh, the city has bonded and received grants on these, and we need an update as to when they're going to be done. Councilor Roman. Uh, yes, as the with with the maker's order, I'd like to be added as a co-sponsor and under discussion to have an update on the pool project. So I've had a few meetings. Oh, hold on. So the um, <laughs> motion would be to receive, a, and then. Take final action, or just we're going to send it. Receive to and send it to committee, but I like to provide. Okay, so we're we're going to send it to. I mean, we can't debate. Yeah, that's why you have to take final action, so you can't debate it. So motion would be take final action. That would be the motion. Is there a second to that? Second. All those in favor? Aye. All Aye. opposed? Council Roman, so you can debate. Um, so with the pool project, because I've been inquiring as well, um, we. I like this order because I like to get the DPW and I met with Terry and heard from others. Um, we, and I just spoke with the mayor today on it, we are basically um, not going to complete the pool by this summer. So as a result, we're going to, there's different options in the mayor's office, but he talked with the secretary. We're most likely going to have to respond back or withdraw from the park grant for this year. We'll reapply. Um, right away and the secretary encouraged the city saying that we'd get the project but it was a delay um, from I don't know so we'll have to get answers to where the delay lies um, but the mayor was very upfront with that today in the meeting because it was one of the agenda items I asked for like hey where are we at with the pool project but the pool um, there are out to bid for like design and engagement but in order for us to receive the full park grants we have to have had the whole project done by June of this year, and so it wouldn't be completed. Um, but the mayor's office, you know, is working on it as well as Terry. Um, I know Murphy, who's my constituent, and also the park commissioner. He's on me like white on rice all the time about all those park projects. So um, I just followed up, and I just wanted to give you all an update that the pool will not probably be done by this summer, uh, and that we have to reapply for the park grant right away. All right. So motion will be received and referred to finance to get those updates. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? J we already took up. Um, hold on.
that the auditor conduct this this was the one we already took up it's actually it was printed and then it was so that was already taken up no other late files sure. that is it adjourned. motion is adjourned don't debate it all those in favor all those opposed Aye. Aye. we stand adjourned Thank you.